<laughs> get pumped, get ready. Get ready, it's time, man. No falling asleep. I'm really tired. This I didn't the, go to sleep very often. This is the no sleep zone. We got so many great things to talk about. We got such an exciting show. We got so many questions, interesting questions, interesting news stories, interesting everything. We've got the other half of TGS. It's a right select like podcast. Get psyched, motherfucker. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. That was the, that was the, that was the beginning. That was the intro. Uh, yeah, and I'm Jeff. I'm, uh, I'm the one screaming, and Michael's the one that's not screaming. I just so. got out of work. It's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start keeping crank over here, or, or crack, or or caffeine. I don't know. Uh, well, I just like forgot sodas? to grab a coke on my way out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to get one at Seven Eleven, but I forgot. Damn it! Damn it! Well. That's okay. I will perk <laughs> you up with my uh, bubbly personality at all of this crazy video game news that we have. <laughs> you don't need caffeine. You don't need caffeine either, listener. You just listen to the sound of me scream for two hours. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, Is it, though? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I haven't done Jack in the last week uh, to talk about outside of play Borderlands and watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine is good, and Borderlands it's a really good show. 3 is kind of boring. It's starting to become boring to me. Oh, that's as, unfortunate. As it, you know, you're 12 hours into one of these these types of games that's just like, oh, right, it's just, you just kill a guy, get a new gun, kill a guy, get a new gun and that's that's pretty much it but fortunately uh we had last week john and i were just hitting the very beginning of tgs and we talked about a little bit of the very beginning of it yes. but now we have the rest of tgs uh and not as many like trailers or announcements as i would have thought i was actually actually expecting a lot more to come out of tgs there was some Stuff here and there that I really was interested in, but yeah, not a whole lot. It was like Project enough. Project Resistance got announced, you know, yeah, and um, uh, they showed off some more uh, Kakarot. Right, right. Well. There was that whole story about it's going past the. Yeah, I was going the, to the Boo Saga. The Boo Saga. Thank God. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing were these these monster stage demos. Like I was looking yeah. up the Death Stranding ones, and uh, I, I was like, oh, they did like an hour on Modern Warfare at TGS. Well, like that's crazy. I. It's all in Japanese. I don't care. Uh, or it like it goes boom, 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 Michael Bay, boom, boom, boom. Right. Or like 30 minutes of Neo 2. And, and I'm like. Sugoi. They say Sugoi a lot. Oh, so much Sugoi. <laughs> Actually, my favorite thing is was I was rewatching the, the Death Stranding thing so we could talk about it. And there's that lady who's like the co-host on there. Yeah. And she just is constantly going, oh. Like, oh. just, like she's just so excited like about everything. Speed that's Racer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about a few of those things, but not a lot. We're not going to do like a, a Nintendo, Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo Direct <laughs> when we spend the entire half talking yeah, about it. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Because there's not a lot. But I did feel like uh, I'm going to flip the script this week because last week we talked more about Death Stranding and I put a Final Fantasy VII person in the thumbnail. And this week we're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII <laughs> and I put Death Stranding in the thumbnail oh, because, haha. <laughs> Ah, sucker! Psych. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you that makes you mad and you want to unsubscribe from Rage Select, please do because that would be pretty mad. Uh, I'm not. I mean, you know, it wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Actually, it appears that nothing will make people unsubscribe from Rage Select. They just stop watching the videos. That's so fair. That's, you know. Yeah. Um, they just die. Probably. But <laughs> they just die. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that the reason I can't get anybody to watch the videos anymore is because all the people that used to be watching Rage Like videos are just dead now? Yeah, it's like the ring, except <laughs> except Jason shows up at your house after 12 days and you just die. <laughs> Jason Murphy isn't going to anybody's house. I can barely get him to go to come to my house. That's fair. Um <laughs> That would be really tragic, though. It turns out that that all of our audience was elderly in the beginning, <laughs> and that they just all passed on. I mean, over here reading the obituaries like I'm in a Tampa nursing home. <laughs> it's like, oh no, Jonathan Scratch. Oh shit. I'm just picturing a grandma watching Rage right, like while knitting. It just, <laughs> just makes me giggle. <laughs> oh, these these boys are on fleek. They're talking about them Digbys again. Oh, <laughs> Jeff, shut up about Dark Souls. We know you like it. <laughs> Talk about Madden more, Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so we got 45 minutes worth of Final Fantasy VII, even though I feel like, okay, I'm going to do my best not to just repeat my my general kind of mealiness about Final Fantasy VII. I'm going to try my best to be kind of more a little bit more upbeat about it. Um, I feel like, but I do feel like that so much of the footage that we've seen so far has been Cloud and Barrett fighting robots. Like, I feel like yes. that's been 90% of what we've seen is Cloud and Barrett fighting a robot. Here's what I'll say, though, about the 45 minutes of footage. 
It's the most interested I've ever been in this ser- in this game. Yeah, because it looked like every time I was just like, "Well, the action probably isn't going to be all that interesting," because you know, like we've played fucking a lot of Kingdom Hearts, and that game is just hit the one button over and over again, and then do the one combo over and over again. Yeah, there's actual like stuff going on in this thing that makes it seem like it has a lot more going for it, and that has like an actual sort of block. There's a little more. I mean, like I like the. Or, uh, I, I'm a little confused by the. Um, like, there's this burst mechanic where it's like if you build up damage, then it like breaks the enemy's defenses, and you can get in like 200 percent damage for yeah. a limited amount of time. That that mechanic has been in like I think I know it was in 13 because I remember using yeah. it right. Um, I'm pretty sure it's been in some of the other ones as well, though. This kind of like build up to a break point and then. That's where you get the real damage in. Yeah, I think uh, some of the Kingdom Hearts games has it as well. But um, it's it's kind of weird because it just I feel like it's been kind of like the Square Enix MO for a while is just kind of doing this whole like building up and then breaking type of thing. I also I mean, really like the slowdown for choosing your different things as well. Oh, where it brings up the menu and then everything's just running in like super slow motion. Yeah. Yeah, there was one point in the demo where like he was in the menu and one of Barrett's bullets slowly came over and then hit the enemy and it showed the three damage like coming up really slow and I was that's like, kind oh, that's kind of cool. It also, I want to keep saying this, like no matter what I, uh, no matter what qualms I have about Final Fantasy VII, I mean, it looks incredible. Like the the graphics are incredible. Absolutely, like, the graphics look freaking amazing. Um, it's probably the nicest looking Square game in a while. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fifteen was pretty good looking, but then it ended up kind of being. I mean, there was just so much kind of like running around in the wilderness that. Yeah. Uh, but like all the Midgar stuff, all the kind of steampunky, the big robots that you're fighting in the first part of the game. Um, I don't know. And then they also announced this whole classic mode thing where it's basically like... I think that's kind of cool, actually. It, it seems to me that it's... Okay, so a lot of uh, like a, a, a lot of news articles have had this like this, this kind of clickbait title of like Final Fantasy VII Classic. It plays just like the old one. And it's like, no, 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 no. It no, just means that you don't was. have to keep hitting the button to attack. Like, you still have to build up and then give like commands to do the ATB attacks. But then it seems like your character auto attacks and auto blocks probably not as good as you could if you were playing the game but like yeah, it tries it's basically like a, a mock turn based kind of thing because it'll go back and forth between the characters in the classic mode yeah to make it feel like it's supposed to be like that but yeah everybody moves automatically they block automatically which I, so that i mean and that brings up a thing that i've been kind of like nebulous about for a long time and it's when i watch the footage when i watch the active battle footage and i'm like okay uh, and, and, and correct me if you think that what I'm saying sounds stupid, because I'd be more than willing to have somebody correct me. But like, OK, JRPGs have gotten longer and longer and longer as time has gone on. Right. Yes. It used to be that a long JRPG was like 25, 30 hours. And now JRPGs are like 80 to 90 hours. And just like the standard length of a JRPG has gotten longer than it's been before. The idea of having these active battles where you've got to keep jamming on an attack button for an 80 hour game like conceptually it exhausts me the idea of having a game i mean i can beat dark souls like four times in 80 hours or like you know you could play uh, like four other action games and the idea of just every enemy you're going to be hitting that attack button and hitting that attack button and looking for the blocks and like building up your thing for 80 hours because i mean like jrpgs have trash mobs right it's not all boss fights some of these interesting robot boss fights like they even show in the demo just some kind of garbage enemies that you're just going to have to jam attack 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 and if it's like a jrpg you're not going to want to waste your magic on the little guys no attack 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 you know so that i like the idea of having that classic mode for when i eventually get tired yeah. of attack, 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 attack. Like, like, I like the idea a lot, especially because it's something that you could just sort of hang out and kind of do, I guess, if that makes sense. You can what? Like, you're just, like, sitting there just doing whatever. Oh. And you just be like, oh, just hit X real quick and then just go back to whatever you're doing. Right. Like, I mean, it was one to of get the, through something. It's one of the reasons that, for better or worse, I actually kind of liked Final Fantasy XIII was because it had, like, an auto-attack mode, right, yeah. where you could just kind of sit back and, and, and do the top-tier... Like, because you were changing between the different party uh, configurations, you could just do like top tier management because it's like, I don't need to hit the attack, 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 attack button every yeah. single time. Um, I feel like there's a first part to this demo where they're fighting in the Midgar, they're going to the reactor to blow it up for Avalanche. 
that is similar to everything that we've seen before. I feel like later there's a part of it. There's another demo where they're showing Cloud and Aerith and Tifa fighting what I think is a behemoth. Um, well, no, it's this like sewer monster thing from early on. Oh, okay. Originally, okay. like his most interesting thing originally is that he shot like a wave of water at you. Oh, okay. Kind of thing, but like they made him this much more intricate boss fight kind of thing. Okay, because they showed a few more interesting things there. They showed some limit breaks. They showed uh, summons apparently. Yeah. Like just come out and fight with you, which is interesting. <laughs> the way the summons actually work in this is that yeah, they show up. They're actually they basically become another character. Yeah. You can tell them to do certain things, and they'll do like a super eventually, uh, like almost like it's like it, they they do. Uh, a limit break that's basically how they would have been when they f you originally summoned them. Right. Kind of thing, which I think is really weird, but kind of interesting. I, I, I wonder what Knights of the Round is. That's just going to bring out, like, fucking 40, 45 guys to it's fight with you or whatever? To, to, like, start up or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it takes an hour and a half to, to, to do. I mean, I you know, again... Um, the 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 you know what okay i want to i want to really put my cards on the table for this michael if this game was final fantasy 16 and it wasn't cloud and tifa and Aerith and sephiroth and midgar and all that bullshit i would be hyped af for it the only thing that's keeping me from really getting into this is the fact that it's final fantasy 7 again right is it just like that it's cloud and i know cloud and i've seen cloud and the thing is that it would be one thing if Cloud had just been in Final Fantasy VII, and we'd never seen him again, and everybody's been asking for years, and it's like, oh, shit, he's back. But, you know, he's in Crisis Core, <laughs> Zero Mission, Advent Children, Kingdom Hearts. Like, Cloud has been Smash there. Smash Brothers. Smash <laughs> Brothers, yeah. Like, it's not like we've been lacking for Cloud content over the years. Well, the reason I'm not, like, super hyped, because I, I feel like I would be the target audience for this, right. is the fact that I know full well that Midgard is, like, the first small chunk of the game. And they haven't said anything about whether or not, like they like they outright asked one of them, it's like, yeah, what are your plans for the second one? They're like, I don't know. Like they outright just said, I don't know, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, guys? Like there's supposed to be like parts of this, and you guys don't know what you're gonna do. I mean, the th yeah, I guess it's weird because again, the yeah, Midgar is the setup. Yeah. Right. It's the setup. Like, like it's <laughs> it's like barely the first disc almost. Like I don't even know. Do you know even who the bad? Do you even know like? who the bad guy is you know I mean, sephiroth exists you know sephiroth exists <laughs> you know there's something going on with cloud but like before you get to like niflheim and wutai and all that stuff like you do you, you don't know that much about cloud like you know more about like the idea that the shinra is evil right the more you in midgard and then eventually when you leave midgard is when everything really really opens i mean up. you don't even start getting characters backstories until you're out of midgard right Oh, uh, you get like one or two. It, do, you, do you get Barrett's before you leave? No, his is his is at the Golden Saucer. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, like again, it, and I I don't think that Square would be so stupid as to have an eighty hour RPG that doesn't have some kind of like if they have to rewrite the game to have some climactic yeah thing that happens. I guess, or the other option would be if this game is 20 hours, right? Yeah. If you're going to have three 20-hour games that equal a 60-hour game, but I feel like modern RPG fans would not be happy with a 20-hour RPG. Well, they outright said they also want to make it feel like it's a full, full game, so they're probably going at minimum for like something massive. I guess it also just depends, again, on if they if they rearrange the story and rewrite it to, to give it better story beats. Are the people that want a faithful remake of Final Fantasy VII going to get mad right well the, everything they show like for this like from this and the trailers from before outright show it's not going to be that like exact anymore right and they added a bunch of stuff for as far as i can tell for those two like other avalanche characters i don't even know their names oh yeah there are the three of them because there's three other avalanche guys yeah the woman the skinny guy and the fat guy is it is it biggs and wedge for the other two i don't even remember i just I... remember they die <laughs> that's, yeah. the thing. <laughs> that's the thing like you didn't know who they were they're just like we're avalanche i guess i'm like cool and then they died i'm like uh, who was that i didn't even know yeah like they're like oh it's sad i'm like i don't know who that guy was like who was that again <laughs> yep just a, just a, it was just a stack of triangles. Yeah. Some of those triangles of, were red and some of them were gray. A stack and, of fat triangles just yep. died on a rail like, oh, you, I loved you, Cloud. I'm like, who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, I mean, again, I'm, I'm uh, like, I, I still maintain what I said before. It's not like watching this. I'm suddenly like, oh, my God, I can't wait. Like, I think it still looks too Kingdom Heartsy. I'd rather they be doing something besides remaking 7 again. Um, but 
I will say that it looks good. The battle system seems like it's fine for what it is. Um, I just, yeah, it's just, it's going to, no, I don't know, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I mean, I'm opti- I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay. Is it really all I could say? Well, what I'm coming down to basically for it is like, I'm going to play it, right? Yeah. I'm going to play it and we'll see whether it hits or not. Like, it, it might hit and I might be like, oh, cool. I forgot. I like this way more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. It's just that nothing that they've shown me so far is kind of what I want. And so it's like a question of, well, I wanted something else, but you gave me something I didn't even know I want. Hooray. Or, oh, bleh, this is just Final Fantasy. Like, yeah. uh, So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, from there, we also got... Now, I feel a little bit... I feel slightly betrayed, Michael, because they were <laughs> like, oh, there's going to be three 50-minute Death Stranding presentations. And I was like, yeah! All right. <laughs> so last week we talked briefly about the first one, and we'll go. I want to go over it a little bit more with you yeah. because John didn't want to watch it. Um, the second one was Norman Reedus in a room, like making faces, looking at stuff, going to the bathroom. It was all about customization oh, okay. and like like looking at your gear and like you can change the colors of the lights and the colors of your backpack and the colors of this thing. And like, you can kind of screw around. Like at one part they zoom in on his crotch and he puts his hands over his crotch and they do it too many times and he punches the camera. You can like, you can take a shit. It's like, okay, cool. Sure. I guess. Um, But uh, apparently Norman's or Sam's bodily fluids like factor into this game in a pretty big way. But, um, so that was the second one. Yeah. Not a lot of new information. Also, in the second one, all of the UI was in Japanese. So I couldn't even pause oh, okay. <laughs> and suss out, like, here's the description of a thing, and it's just a block of Japanese. Uh, now, I know that IGN has translated it. I haven't had a chance to watch that one yet. I did watch the first one. Oh, okay. Um, and then that's it. That's all this one is. It's just, like, you know... Hey, you can put different kinds of pouches on your backpack. I mean, like it's the sort of thing you know. You know this. You 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 know Ko- Hideo Kojima. Yeah. It's just like you know what? When I saw this backpack, the Bridges backpack, and the fact that you could change it to different colors, it just immediately reminded me of the way that in Metal Gear Solid Four you can change the his chest yeah. thing into dumb different colors for no good reason, and they all kind of look stupid. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, like, there's a lot of customization. Yeah. You can put different hats on, different sunglasses. You could change the color of the hats and the sunglasses. They put a lot of, he puts a lot of work into just random customization. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, maybe the third part, though, that's going to be, like, the character one. And what it was was all the Japanese voice actors and him on a stage. And him asking them questions in Japanese and no footage whatsoever. And I was just like, oh, well, this is, I can't. This is nothing. I oh, can't. Yeah. I don't know anything about uh, this. Not even Norman Reedus was there. N- no, it was just the Japanese voice actors, which was funny because a lot of the trailers were in Japanese there, and it's obviously in English. And then it was like badly dubbed into, or like dubbed into Japanese. Yeah. So like the voices didn't, or the mouth didn't match the Japanese vocal lines. Yeah, because my favorite thing is when you watch some of them. Like I think it's their intro thing. It has the Japanese subtitles. Right. Like, it's like, yeah, this obviously was supposed to be in English originally, and then he just threw some voices on here. Right. It's so weird. Um, but, you know, Kojima's wanted to make a fucking Hollywood movie for so long. That he really has. Finally gotten around to it. Uh, in any case, um, y- the second and third trailers are kind of useless. I mean, like, I, I've been hard I've been hard pressed to squeeze out nuggets of information from them well, like there's not much unless you fully know japanese is really what it comes down i mean to. i still gotta watch the the ign translated one uh but a lot of the second one i mean we've seen this before of that's just right yeah the monster energy drinks and all that change stuff. your you know what change the color of mother base yeah. right like and it's like well that's cool i'm gonna probably do it once and then never again i'll probably forget <laughs> i did it kind of thing i mean i think i turned my mother base pink in, in mgs5 one time it's so like all the too. buildings were just these giant pink monstrosities and miller and they're more all just like oh we gotta rescue the world uh, snake and i'm just like yeah all right let's do it get the guys out of the pink building to come down here yeah i remember making the the helicopter song uh, kids in america yeah and then i never changed it <laughs> or like the um uh the shower so you could shower yourself off after yeah. you came back from missions and you were too muddy even though it didn't really do anything uh, i forget it's actually supposed to do something but i can't even remember what it was 
I think it's like people react to you if you smell bad, or they're I think, like, yeah, people like can, I think it's harder to hide. I think as part of it as well. And you got like people can smell flies you. around you or stuff. So, but in any case, IGN did actually translate the the first one. Um, and you watched the first one. Uh, yes, you're the only person I know who will watch this. I tried to get, I tried to talk to Matt Frank about this. He was just like, I don't want to know anything else. I'm like, <laughs> God damn it, I want to talk about this game with people. Um, it's very exciting. What did you, th- what did you think? You didn't actually see the English one. You just watched. I did the, not. I just heard a lot of Segoy. Yeah, <laughs> and oh, and just a lot of just cool looking shit. It's yeah. just like all like the the you know the repairing of the spray or, or the box and him just. Leaving that shit there, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, it's like, or at least that's what I assumed was happening, kind of thing. And just a whole lot of traversing and a lot of just different controls, and uh, it's just, oh my god, I'm just fucking. Oh. One of the one of the things that I learned by reading the or by watching the subtitle thing is that apparently, like when you're walking, you're literally going to be using like L2 and R2 to balance to one side or the other. All right. And I'm like, I can see that being interesting. I don't know if I'm like it, but. Maybe I don't really know. I'm sure it's um, something I'll get used to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I after watching this, I'm just full on, and I can't, I can't, goddamn wait mode because um, there's just so much. There's so many little details, and then the whole thing about you know, uh, like if you're connected to the network, and then you see other people's things, and people can work together to like build stuff. Like in the English version, yeah. they talked about how when you're connected to the network, you'll see the footprints of other players, right? And that if enough players walk in the same place, then it becomes a path oh, okay. that does like less foot damage when you walk across it. Yeah, I was trying to uh, figure out what was going on with that because, like, yeah, like I said, I watched this Japanese. And there's a lot of just like, oh, look at this thing. And it's just like, oh, that's kind of neat. Just footprints, I guess. I guess he's trying to talk about how people affect your game or something. But I didn't really understand any of it. <laughs> yeah, so there's a part early on where you see like that the – because the, the whole thing about him is he's trying to connect everybody to the network, right? Yeah. And like when you're on the network, that's when you could do the like – scans and you can see other players things that are left but if you're off the network then none of the other stuff shows up so it's like the first time you go into an area and it's off of the chiral network then like you're not going to see any of the recharge stations or ladders or things that people have left and then once you connect yourself into that thing you're going to see all this other stuff i also read a thing i don't know if i talked about this last week on the podcast or whether i just said it to you but like Oh, there's all the liking stuff that's in the game, and I was thinking that the likes might actually end up being like a resource that you could use. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was like an interview with him where he was like, no, it's just like people being nice to each other. And I'm like, okay, all right. Because, but then the thing is that if you use another person's, like if a person leaves a bridge. Well, apparently this is a musician. Like, I'm sorry, I'm also watching the thing. Oh, yeah. At the same time. If, if you, if there's a bridge left by another player and you walk across it it gives them a like just because you used it yeah. like you don't have to hit the button uh but then you just give more for more stuff now i wouldn't be surprised if he's a lying lying liar son because kojima lies he lies a lot and that 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 like count does count to something he's all like solid snake is the main character Metal Gear solid too i'm like neat <laughs> right yeah metal gear solid or the phantom pain is not a metal gear game at all it's about a guy with this got a face problem we're gonna uh, talk to this dude with bandages on his face yeah like i'm not falling for your shit again yeah fool me once shame on you fool me five or six times <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um yeah, so there's a lot more. I mean, I don't know. If anybody who's on the fence about this, I the the main thing, it's funny, I, I keep thinking about how um, if Hideo Kojima was like a, a, an American, he'd be a big hippie. Because just like, no, man, it's not any type of game. It's like a strand game. It's a new type of game. And it's all about forming like connections with other people. I feel like and... he would talk like the guy who talks about ancestors. Oh, Patrice Dissoulet. Yeah, yeah. Like, that dude's very too much about, like, it's about life and family or right. whatever. It's like, what is happening? It's just this, like, ambiguous horse shit where yeah. you're like, wait, what? Super, super, <laughs> like, what is happening? Uh, yeah. So, I, and also, though, it seems like it's going to be kind of cool to play online because when you play online, there's, like, you know, if people drop a container, yeah. you can pick it up. And, like, and it sounds like from his description that it's not going to be again that it's not going to be because the closest analog i can think of to this is like dark souls but it's not going to be like dark souls because if a player drops a thing 
and you pick it up, then it's not there for other people. Yeah. So, like, there's literally an economy of these different people all playing the game at the same time. And, like, putting a locker in to store your extra shit in and maybe just be like, I don't need this anymore. You can have these boots if you need them. Yeah. And then people can just pick them up and go. And then they leave you a like. And you're like, hey, great. I got more likes. I'm not, I don't know how much I like the idea of, of getting likes. But then when I listen to Kojima talk about it, it sounds like he's much more for lack of a better term, Japanese about it, where he's just like, <laughs> it's about expressing thankfulness to other people and not like this, like, fuck, I got to get 40 more people on Instagram to like my shit if I'm going to be a good person, right? <laughs> like, the way that America is just shitty about social media. It's very much about cooperativeness is what he's, was what I'm hearing more and more from him. Yeah. Like, it's, it's one of those things where, like, a lot of games are very much about fighting each other. Yeah. Whereas this is one of the few games that are like, this is all really about working together without really even being next to each other. Yeah. Which I think is fascinating. And so, here's the thing. Um, oh, oh, my God. We're almost at 30 minutes. i got to wrap this up. <laughs> here's the thing. We could talk about Death Stranding for a while. Yeah. We have, at length. Yes. Um, I love what the fact that you just throw shit at people. If, if, if this game ends up not being very combat centric, so far Hideo Kojima has not made a game that mechanically I have not liked. No. So, you know, MGS5, I have quibbles with the story, but like mechanically that game is sound. Four, mechanically that game is solid. Three, amazing. You got to go back to two when it was still kind of clunkier, but even that was amazing for the time. It's just not aged super well. So, like, if Hideo Kojima wants to make a game that's all about getting likes on Facebook and balancing your way through walking around a field for 40 minutes, I don't think it's going to be bad. I mean, just because of the track record of this guy. He's got a fantastic track record. If this turns out to be garbage, I'll be the first one to tell you. Yeah. If, 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 um, who's, uh, black and white, uh, beyond, uh, uh, the guy, uh, uh, Molly oh, knew. Molly knew. If I Molly knew trying to say. was making this game, I would be like, mm, I yeah. don't know, Molly knew. You he would say. Be, he'd be making up so much shit. You say a lot of things and then they don't ever come true. But like, also the fact I was I saw a tweet from somebody online talking about how like, um, how like Hideo Kojima waits to show his games until they're like way finished. He waits a long finished. time. So, like, we're not seeing an alpha build where things are going to change. This is probably, I mean, it comes out in, like, 30 days. So That's super close. Bada bing, bang, boom. All right. Let's do the actual news. And we're going to do it quick, 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 quick. Um, so, this week, something really crazy happened with Steam. I don't know if you saw this, but... They went to Area 51? Uh, they went to Area 51, <laughs> and Naruto ran, and it was stupid. No. Uh, a French high court ruled that in France, Steam has to allow Steam users to sell their games to other people. Uh, because, you know, Europe, unlike the United States, actually has like kind of consumer protection stuff. Yeah. So, the this French court, it was a lawsuit brought by a group, and basically this French court said... You buy a game on Steam, you own a game on Steam. You have to be able to sell that to somebody else because it's your property at that point. Steam fought back by saying, no, you don't buy the game. You buy a license for the game. It's like you're renting the ability to play it. And the French High Court basically was like, no, you don't. Uh, there's no monthly subscription fee. Yeah. You don't ever lose it. You have it forever. You can say that you buy a subscription to it, but you don't. Yeah. You own it. That's what it is. <laughs> That's kind of amazing, actually. So um, it's really interesting, and it could have a lot of really, I mean, kind of far-flung uh like if France makes it so that you have to be able to resell digital games, right? If that precedent is set, that means you should have to do it on the consoles, right? That's the thing. That's going to set up a huge thing. Epic like, Game Store. The fact that like the PlayStation and all of them give refunds in certain areas are because they legally have to. Right. So if this happens like for everything, then it's going to be a huge. Well, it would be. I feel like it would be the sort of thing that would spread to Europe. And then if it goes from France to Europe as a greater whole, like yeah. through the EU connection, and then and then American users start being pissed that they can't resell their games, and those dirty fucking Belgians can. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have anything against Belgians. Um, and the Dutch. And the Dutch. <laughs> uh, like, that could set a precedent that could eventually lead to us being able to resell, you know, think about being able to sell your used copy of a digital only game that you got. It's one of those like, crazy ideas that like you never really understood the idea of like it's it's hard to explain. Cause it's one of those things where you understood why you couldn't just 
sell your digital game because you're like, well, I'm buying it digitally. And it's not like I can just give it to somebody else kind of thing. It's like, well, but the only thing stopping you is that Sony won't build the tools into the PlayStation Store to let you but do it. Like, you well, know. That's what I mean. Like, there yeah. isn't anything. Because that's the thing about, like, and you use anything else. Like, because you physically have it on you. Right. So you can, so you see, your mind doesn't ever think about the idea that, oh, digitally wise, all you have to do is just make a guy be able to let you do it yeah you just never thought of the idea because the company made it show you never thought of that idea kind of thing yeah i think it's mostly it's because it's been ingrained within us that it's like well that's impossible exactly it's like no it's totally possible like you could totally take a game on the playstation or i'll use the xbox i'll go all the way go to the xbox right and if you had a game what if they just allowed you to essentially collapse that game into a code right yeah and then it's like delisted from your store. It's in code form. You have it in your your library until somebody else redeems that code. And then you can just sell the code to somebody online. Yeah. Bada bing bang boom. Or give it to somebody. Kind yeah. Of thing. Uh, the companies could just have a thing. I I don't know if they already do where it's just like a code authenticator, right? So that if you somebody's like, here's the code, and you're like, all right, I have to authenticate this before I send you the forty bucks, well. right? And then you send them the forty bucks. You you uh, you know you redeem the code it comes out of your library like that doesn't seem like a horrible thing because we use those codes all the time steam has yeah. codes xbox has codes everybody has the codes so uh if you could just make it go in the opposite direction that's actually a lot easier than having to build some kind of store person to person selling apparatus right it's interesting the idea the implications of this more than anything yeah because who, who knows what will happen next yeah it's a good question i think you should be able to do that i think it sounds like a great idea go france um so not seen but the epic store also had a thing last week where uh this company i don't know digital bros the parent company of, do you know the parent company of 505 games is called digital bros that's kind of amazing um has disclosed that they got a 9.49 million euro payment from the Epic Game Store. And when people did some looking into it, they kind of think that that's for control exclusivity on the Epic Game Store. Huh. And so far, we haven't really gotten any type of information about um, like how much does it cost to get to buy epic exclusivity yeah and this is kind of a a, a a like a nudge that like for control it may have cost and by the way 9.49 million euros is about is approximately 10 million dollars that's crazy uh, so uh probably around 10 million dollars and so then i was thinking if you if you do the math on that i believe it's 166,000 uh copies at 60 dollars a pop for 10 million dollars so if you add that payout on top of what they did sell on yeah. both the consoles, retail, and on the Epic Game Store, it's like if that's the kind of money that Epic is willing to shell out, again, I've been on this, you know, been on this train for a while, but like if you were making an indie video game and somebody came to you and they were like, I will give you $2 million for Epic exclusivity, you'd just be like, oh, fuck, do you want my dick too? Yeah, I could buy like, a new dick for $2 million. It's <laughs> like, oh, I'll give you my firstborn, $2 million. Yeah, sold. How many babies would you like? <laughs> you know, None. You mean, uh, oh, you mean you're going to give me enough money that I can literally retire, work on my game 24 hours a day, never have to work again, and then I'm still going to get paid when the game comes so out? So much money. Like... And Epic has that kind of money to throw around. And so the idea that that people are just like, uh, it makes me so mad. And I'm like, but you're not making a counter offer, right? Like, yeah. The counter offer is is the the thing has to sell, I don't know, what's two million into sixty bucks a pop? Like for a triple A game, it's gotta sell like <laughs> like several hundred thousand uh, several at least tens of thousands of copies on on Steam. Well, the thing is, every consumer, the consumers that are mad about it, their counterpart is like, well, I'm not going to give you $60. Like, that's cool. That dude gave me $10 million fucking dollars. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that peace is at a lot of, and, and, he, and I know that I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to dump on PC gamers at all here. No, I'm not either, because here's the thing is, like, you, it just comes down to you can't blame them. Right. Is really what it comes down to. Like, you can be mad all you want, but so if somebody walked up to you and said, I'll give you $10 million and you can only work at this one place for, like, a, maybe, like, a year, because that's the thing about these exclusivities. Right. They're there for, like, a year. They're just like, all you got to do is go to work here for, like, a year. But like, fuck yeah, $10 million right then to there. Right. 
So yeah, especially especially for the indies, right? Or, or or for a company like Remedy, right? Where it's like, I mean, Remedy had their deal with Microsoft, but then they yeah, that Quantum Break didn't do so well. Yeah, then that's gone. And especially when you consider the way that like mid tier developers and indie developers have to like sell their souls to these big publishers in order to get anything done. A lot of places got closed that kind of way. As yeah. Well, so. Or the fact that like if you do well, then you'll get snapped up by Activision and they'll have you make a game that you don't want to make and then when it doesn't do well, you'll get dissolved and they'll just take half of you and put you make, make you make Call of Duty games for the rest of your life and the other half can go fuck themselves. I'm like, no, I'll take the epic money, man. Yeah, no, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, give me that money. It's fuck a cutthroat it. industry. Absolutely. Um, Let's see. Speaking of uh, speaking of things that you can buy on the Epic Game Store, Borderlands Three came out, and this is less of a real story than it is just kind of like poor Borderlands Three. I mean, just like uh, you know, okay, all the shit with Randy Pitchford, all the shit with with was it Two K or whatever, yeah. and, and the and the guy that they sent him out to their house, and all the all the horrible. I, you know, punch the claptrap guy in the face at a, a convention and a yeah. Marriott and, uh, and shit. And it also kind of runs like shit on every platform. Yeah. Borderlands 3 kind of runs like shit. Like it runs like shit on my PS4 Pro, regardless of whether it's when it's in um, the detail mode, it's choppy, but it's kind of consistent at 30 frames per second. In performance mode, it's texture pop in forever and it, it, doesn't run at a solid 60. Apparently, it's like that across the board. There was a thing this, this week where apparently on the PC version, the Epic Game Store, people's saves were just being deleted. Oh, uh, damn. Uh, so, uh, but apparently, Gearbox is working on it. So, you know, they put out a thing. Thank you all for your continued enthusiasm and support. We want Borderlands 3 to be the best game possible, and we're actively monitoring your feedback. We're working on performance and quality of life improvements, and we'll have more to share soon at Borderlands.com. You know, it's funny. This to me, it feels like Gearbox has always been like a lazy second tier company that kind of makes slipshod games, and that no matter how much money they get, they still make lazy slipshod games. That's like, the thing. They've re released Borderlands 2 like 20 times now. And it's, like, besides Skyrim, it's one of the only other games that's been re released this many times. Yeah. And I just like, how does it run like shit? How does it run like shit, you guys? Yeah, I was talking <laughs> I, like, to a coworker. He said he spent like two hours trying to get it to run as best as he could. On like the like, PC? It was just fucking with the, the settings for like two hours. Yeah. It was fucking crazy, apparently. And it's not like it, I mean, you know, it's not like it's that Final Fantasy VII remaster, right? Like it, it, it's just Borderlands. Yeah. It's just slightly higher resolution. I mean, like it looks better than Borderlands 2. Not that much better than Borderlands 2. I mean, mm. yeah, every time I looked at it, I'm like, this, yeah, this looks like the end, an end. 360 life cycle game. Yeah. And yet it still runs like why does it a run? fucking pre 360 game? Why does it run so badly? It's so weird. Like it's like what happened, guys? Well, you know what? Uh I know how you can solve your fears uh or I know how you can assuage your Borderlands 3 uh uh problems with the with their bloody harvest Halloween event that they just announced. Oh jeez. So apparently uh during a live stream event, uh they talked about how Bloody Harvest is going to be a free Halloween-themed limited-time thing happening um, it, later on in October uh, that's going to have, like, you're going to have to kill a certain number of ghost things, and then you can go to this area that's all kind of spookified. Oh, Jeff, it's, it's your favorite, Greg Miller. Yeah, it's Greg Miller. It's my favorite guy on all the internet. I actually like Greg Miller. Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I would like him better if he would ask questions <laughs> and not just be like Ooh, do it about this robot i'm gonna be salty about that for a long time <laughs> we had never seen that game before and he was just like where can i get a t-shirt do you make plushies of that robot wow does it have lightsabers in it i'm like dude <laughs> questions it's kind of funny um <laughs> in any case uh if you're interested they are going to be putting out a free Time limited update with, of course, time limited loot and time limited skins and time limited everything. No, and it's gonna be it, they're gonna spookify that one area, and there's gonna be like the ghost of that trout guy that we we fought oh, in okay. uh, the Patreon video. That's kind of neat. And it's like, uh, okay, cool. I guess I'm already tired of Borderlands. I'm about halfway through it. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it because just, <laughs> just I'm actually surprised there's an event this early on, but it makes some kind of sense, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which you know we gotta we gotta decide we gotta find out all the companies are gearing up for Halloween right, and uh, I get it gearing. 
Xbox. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rockstar may actually have uh, tipped their hand a little bit because whether it was intentional or not, people have been seeing zombies start showing up in Red Dead Online. Oh, geez. Uh, and they're like, some of them are just kind of like pale looking guys with weird, weird stuff. And then there's some, there's like the Swamp Witch with like glowing green eyes that showed up at one point. Oh, that's kind of cool. They haven't said anything about it, but it seems like there might be a Red Dead Online Halloween event coming. And I guess they just launched that big update with all the different classes. Yeah. They're really trying hard to get people back in there. I'm always a fan when companies do Halloween stuff. I still need to go back and play that. What was that infamous... Like oh, the, the vampire the thing, vampire. I think it was the, awesome. Thing of the damned or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I like it when uh, when games get uh, spooktacular, especially for, uh, especially in games that weren't designed that way. Right. I also just like the idea that maybe it isn't a thing, and maybe there's just zombies now in Red Dead Two. It's not a Halloween thing. It's just like, no, you guys like Dead Dead Nightmare, right? Come on, please play this game. There's Come zombies on. now <laughs> forever. Um. Yeah, and if you want to play it on the PC... You want a unicorn? Here's a unicorn. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll be installing yet another launcher because Rockstar put out the Rockstar Games PC launcher. Uh, my eyes just rolled so hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now all of your games, all your Rockstar games are in the Rockstar game launcher. All your Grand Theft Autos. It's grand and, and like if you install it, they'll give you a free copy of San Andreas. And I'm like, that's all right, guy. I already own San Andreas a bunch of times. Yeah, like I'm it's okay. fine. Also, San Andreas doesn't hold up very well with modern controls and stuff. Like no. No, well, none of them really do. Yeah. Story wise and music wise, they're great, but yeah. Uh so yeah, apparently you can buy Bully, Max Payne 3, the complete edition, LA Noir, GTA 3, GTA 5, GTA Vice City, uh, and it'll scan your PC and like put any installed Rockstar games in there. And I'm just like, what are you, what are you doing? That's very strange. What are you doing? I'm never gonna download that. Like I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna engage with the Rockstar Social Club, even though you made me make yeah. an account for the Rockstar Social Club. I don't know how to log into it. Yep. Uh, Did you hear that? Like sometimes a person will log into their their Social Club thing on another gta thing and find out somebody's been using their gta account <laughs> the entire time no it's fucking amazing it wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me they just bought the password off the dark web and they're just like nobody ever logs into the social club yeah because i read a story where it's like yeah i put a gta online for the first time in a long time and i all of a sudden i had like a hundred million dollars and a tank <laughs> and shit and i'm like what the fuck's happening <laughs> yeah somebody just been eh. Just running around doing heists. Yeah, it was really funny. I was like, "That's amazing." Um, actually, that might have not. That might. It might have been a hacker. Might have just been like, I know that every time I feel like I log into my GTA Five account, they're just like, "Hey, man, we just gave you fifty million dollars because you know you want to come back and play GTA Online." And I'm yeah. like, "Well, I got to record two videos." Rockstar they're like, "No, forever." And I'm like, "No, that's all right." <laughs> like, "No, forever." Gamble in our casino, rob a bank to get more fake money. So many weird shit. But anyway, love it. if you want to have yet another, how many is this? What? Steam, Epic, you play. There's a lot. I, Origin, I don't, I don't good old games, Bethesda. I don't think EA or Activision. Activision had that Black Ops Elite or that Call oh, of yeah. Duty Elite app for a while. but and that died pretty quickly. Yeah, I still got a t-shirt. That's oh, I got really? an E3 for Call of Duty Elite. It's very it's like a car show T-shirt, so I sleep in it a lot. Oh, okay, <laughs> super soft. <laughs> Just got a big skull made out of guns on it. That's how I go to sleep. So I can rep in Call of Duty Elite. That's amazing. Uh, but hey, you know what? Maybe you're online. You're not playing Grand Theft Auto. Maybe you're playing Apex Legends, uh, and maybe you're super excited about the new guy that's coming out because there's a new character called Crypto. Uh, there's like an animated thing that they put out that's like really weird because it's. It's like the characters, there's two characters that are weirdly animated, and then everything else is like a CG model. So two hand animated characters sitting in like what looks like a photo of my desk chair. It's a little like, weird. Like every time certain things happen, you're like, ah, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, and like the frame rate on it's really low. But in any case, um, you know, uh, I, I would have thought that Apex Legends would be dead now, right? Because of their 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 big reddit gaff where they oh, yeah. we're done we're not friends anymore apex legends uh and they're just like don't you guys have phones <laughs> yeah so but that's arriving in october on the next update Good uh for them. this is gonna be season three 
It's good to see that Apex Legends is still running. Hopefully, they'll get their shit straightened out and they won't put in any, what, $170 axes in this one or whatever uh, that thing maybe, was. Maybe 120 one. Yeah. It's lower. Yeah. Guys, the axes are only $30 now. <laughs> They're on sale for Halloween. Buy them. Yeah, um, Jason's on them. But you know what? Maybe you're playing multiplayer games and you're not into Apex Legends. Not everybody plays Apex Legends. No. Uh, maybe you're into Overwatch. And you're also into Legos. I feel like this is the most John Sitton story I've ever had it in my really entire is. life. Uh, because Overwatch has put in uh, Bastion's Brick Challenge, which is a, uh, a... Basically, it's just one of their small events where it's like a set of nine matches and you get like some sprays, and then the ultimate reward is you get a Lego skin for Bastion. Which is really cool looking. Which is Bastion, but he's made out of Legos. And it looks like he's made with like actual Legos. Like they took either the Lego thing they already had for him or something. Like they, it doesn't seem like they cheated. It seems like like you could actually build this. Yeah, absolutely. It, like it, and what I think is interesting is the color scheme is like it makes it look like it's a hodgepodge of yeah. bricks instead of yellow, like blue, the one that they have now. Red and green. Yeah, it looks like something you built yourself out of yeah. Legos. Uh, but it's pretty cool. And you know, as always the Overwatch shit's free. So, yeah. No $30 Bastion skin, you know, you just go and go well, and play the game. Loot boxes still, but yeah. Well, yes. But Probably the least. I don't know. I still That's stand up for the because you can get them a lot. Yeah, they're super easy to get. You can get like three every week. Uh, but you know what? Maybe you know. In other multiplayer news, I sorry. I just got to keep quit making my transition. Like maybe you're not, <laughs> but maybe you are. Or maybe you're a dude, bro. <laughs> In other multiplayer online shooting people news, uh, we got some new information about the Call of Duty Modern Warfare multiplayer beta that's going on, including a very short clip. But the the main things that we have to talk about are, first off, they talked about how cross-play is going to work. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is really interesting because, um, you know, between the Xbox and the PS4, both support keyboards and the PC supports keyboards, but they also, the you know, consoles and the, PS, uh, the PC support controllers and so it's like well how is this going to work and apparently that's how it's going to work is they're going to connect you uh they're going to put you in a lobby based on what your control method is oh okay so like if you're a, using a controller if you're on the pc using a controller then you get put into the controller bin but if you and if you're on the xbox and you got a mouse and a keyboard you go in the mouse and keyboard bin so it's kind of amazing actually yeah which is kind of cool i kind of feel like th there's obviously going to be people that are going to be gaming this system by I don't know. Changing the control key. Spoofing like the, the U putting a USB dongle that makes the keyboard inputs register as a gamepad, and then but you can't stop when people are that determined to be a jag off. Also, there's yeah. apparently going to be lobbies where it's like if you go into this lobby, it's just whoever versus whoever. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's kind of at your own risk. Which I'd actually be really interested. I don't know if we've ever had something as popular as Call of Duty have a controller versus keyboard matchup because for years i've maintained that i don't think the controllers can match the level of control fidelity that you can get off a mouse and a keyboard but you know what a lot of people have been playing a lot of halo for a long ass time who knows maybe they're just as good and i'm they're just a lot more responsive now than they've ever been so yeah it's it could it could very well be an, an even match nowadays i would be interested to see also, um, you know, if you got PS Plus, you can do, you can play it. I guess by the time you hear this podcast, you'll have like two hours left. But you know, actually, we're we're at, we're at forty eight minutes in, so you probably got like an hour and twelve minutes left. And, and, then you, and then you have to download it still, so you're probably you're done. Yeah, you're probably already done. Mom's probably already calling you for dinner. So, uh, also, um, last week was the first beta for Modern Warfare, and there was a big change, uh, and that change was that the mini map was gone. So instead of having the Call of Duty minimap, uh, basically the way that it worked was they had a compass that was up at the top of the screen that showed where the objectives were, but the minimap was totally gone. Oh. Um, and Call of Duty players fucking hate that shit. So it apparently lasted for two days, and then they put it back in, but they are not going to be putting on... Um, the uh, uh, buh, 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 uh, like the dots when people fire, right? Oh, okay. It's only going to be there to kind of show you like what does the world look like, and then where are your teammates? Not necessarily oh, okay. where is the enemy. I uh, I could appreciate that. It's trying to even it a bit more. I think it's a bold move for them to change anything about Call of Duty ever because oh, it's amazing. Every time they do it, it's like you thought that babies were being just 
set ablaze across <laughs> the entire uh, world. Uh, I'm picturing them just getting like high as shit for some reason. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, that's what would happen. So yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I haven't played it. Uh, I think that we're I'm gonna play one for Patreon, and then um, just play the single player when it comes out because I've. I have played every modern war or I've played every Call of Duty game multiplayer on this website for like a few years now and I don't enjoy it and I'm not good at it and I hate it. <laughs> so like we'll play it one time and everybody can be like, "Oh yeah, here's the place where Jeff hated his life." And then when the game comes out, we just play the single player and be like, "Hey, this is the part I like." So um and we'll do it for you. Yep. It's all for you, Damien. Yep. Uh, that actually starts the beginning of our like people being mad at stuff part of the podcast. Because <laughs> uh, the second thing that happened was, okay, this is really interesting. Last week, the Entertainment Software Association sent out uh, some information about E3 for next year. And apparently one of the things that they wanted to do was pay media personalities to come to E3. And in their presentation, the bullet points for why they would want to do this were create paid media partnerships with major outlets and exponentially increase the reach of E3 and its exhibitors. Enables ESA to control content and the message. Oh, geez. CNBC. Tech Impact was a proof of concept uh, that enabled ESA to build the show, own the content, and distribute it nationally. And so, like, the inference coming through here is that it seems like the ESA wants to pay media people to come out and just say nothing but good things about the things going on at E3, which is weird because I feel like I don't see a lot of super negative Nancy coverage from E3. The closest thing is usually just the whole booth babe thing that was going on for a while. Yeah. And even then, that kind of died down pretty quickly. I mean, like, I guess when people play a game on the show floor and they come back and they're like, it was bad, but like... But that has nothing to do with E3 itself. Right. There's nothing to do with the ESA. What it is, though, is in actually digging further into this, is uh, E3 is dying like crazy. So like, is. when they look at the at the gaming exhibitions, Gamescom 2019 had 373,000 people. E3 2019 had 66,000 people. Now, see, here's the thing. E3 is supposed to be a trade show, not PAX. Yeah. Right? Like, it's supposed to be... Like, when I... <clears throat> when I went, the last thing in the world that I wanted, I was mad because I was there as, I mean, like, it was for Rage Select, fine. Or uh, technically it was for Spill, fine, yeah, whatever. The the time, yeah. But, like, I was there as a person to, like, report on things. And so having to stand in line behind somebody who was an exhibitor, but then they, they this was their day off when they didn't have to run the stations. Yeah. So they were in line in front of me waiting to see, take your pick. And it was just like, Dude, this is my job. Like, you have a job. Your job is to run the Mario station over there. <laughs> my job is to talk about how the Mario station runs. Like, please don't make me wait behind you. Um, but I feel like over the years that the ESA has just been, oh, I mean, like, let's run it down, right? Uh, they won't do anything about loot boxes. They had that data breach where all the e E3 oh, yeah. people's personal information got out there. Like... Uh, they've just been they've always been kind of a shitty trade group right did I tell you what happened to Greg Miller at the end of E3 do you get punched in the nuts I would they, love they, to hear they banned him from E3 for like all of like a few days why because they claim that he gave his badge to somebody okay but he's like I gave the badge at the very very end to somebody like at the very very end right he's like I was literally like hosting the final thing He's like, it's obvious that I still had my badge kind of thing. Right. Like, they don't pay attention to anything, apparently. Yeah. Like, it's fucking, like, this, okay, here's the thing I've, I've always heard from people who go to E3, is that E3 is is not very interesting, like, legitimately. <laughs> like, it's just a bunch of, like, small booths here and there, and no one really gives a fuck. And once it's over, everything is just sort of packed up really easily and really fast. It's mm. just, because it's a trade show. Sort it's of. It's not designed to be a convention. Kind of thing. Sort of. I mean, in the years that I went, like the the individual companies would put it on these kind of big booths. Um, you know, there are. I feel like as time went on, I feel like there definitely was a difference between the E three before they shut it down yeah. to the public, and they oh, yeah, tried to make right. the trade yeah. show, and then when they brought it back, back when it was booth babes and like big crazy things and like swag and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel like it was a different show. I never went when it was like that. Um, the, the thing about E3, I think that the way that you do it is you don't do the floor. 
you you go up to the EA booth and you say, I would like to make appointments for the next two days to see everything you've got. And they're like, okay, three o'clock tomorrow, five o'clock on Thursday, and you know, noon today. And so then you just bounce between appointments and then yeah. you go into a small room with like 15 other people and a lot of times they'll give you beer and snacks and swag and then they show you the witcher for 25 minutes and you're like that was fun as fuck uh um, yeah. instead of having to wait in line you know like the first time i went to e3 was the year they announced the wii u and i stood in line for two and a half hours to on the day, first day to see the wii u to get into the, there would have one bank of like here's Wii U games, half of which did not ex- do not exist. Um, oh, okay, that's kind of neat actually. Uh, but that was like the first day because everybody went, and that was the time when I went when I had my, I actually had an exhibitor badge, so I managed to get in early because I was supposed to be an exhibitor setting up exhibits, and so I was able to get in line. The line was already two and a half hours by oh, the time okay. I got in it, and by the time I was out of it, it wrapped around the kiosk place several times out the door <clears throat> on the third day i asked one guy that was in line i was like how long have you been in line he's like since they opened i'm like that was six hours ago <laughs> and he was like yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get in there i'm like i don't think you are you're still like <laughs> three hours from there so i think that i think that e3 needs to be they they haven't reacted to streaming right no they haven't like the fact that we can put on a stream the fact that i was sitting here in my apartment watching tgs live on youtube like that makes a difference. Like, there's no reason for you to rent out the L.A. Convention Center. Not really. And a lot of people just given up on it. Like, fucking, what was it? PlayStation outright didn't do it, and Nintendo stopped doing it ages ago. Yeah. EA moved off-site, right? Yeah. Uh, Xbox, I think they said that they're not going next year or something like that. That like, I'm not sure of. I haven't heard that. I mean, yet. it's also super expensive, and why the fuck do it, right? Like, Yeah, it's the middle of, what, L.A.? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's downtown L.A., uh, so it's it's always super expensive to go, but then, like... The, but the real question is, if you were going to spend the money to set up a booth and you got to pressure your developers to get a build done by that time, why not spend all that time just maintaining a higher normal level of hype with trailers and live streams and events and dev interviews? You could do, you don't need IGN. Yeah. You could do it yourself, man. Yeah, people were like out, are able to outright rent other areas within that section yeah. for less. Oh, Devolver's been putting on their own show in the parking lot outside of E3 yeah. for five years now. So. <laughs> or they got in trouble the first time or something. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, uh, of of things that are at E3 uh, that are, are are not very exciting, let's talk about uh, Anthem a little bit. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's not. So last <laughs> week, uh, Anthem has kind of been like a like a slow motion car accident. Uh, and last week, I feel like the bumpers finally hit each other <laughs> because they came out and basically said that they're not doing their roadmap anymore. Um, yeah. Because they want to focus on just like making the game fun. I feel like poor. Is it still Bioware Austin that has to do this? Yeah, it's still Bioware Austin. <laughs> that poor Bioware Austin has to be like, all right, look, you guys promise people a content update every three months in a broken game. All right, all right. No more roadmap. We're going to start by fixing Anthem. Yeah, that's really what it then is. Then we're going to start making more content for it. Like, I love their statement is like, look, we're just trying to fix this thing is basically right. what it says. Yeah. They're like, I'm sorry, but we we need to make it work first. Yeah. We need to make it fun before we start adding more content. Like if we add Which is more. the saddest thing anyone has ever said about a game that's already out. I know. And you know what? You know what? I, I, I honestly wish them luck because... The, there are the bones and anthem of a good game. Yeah. I loved the flying around Tony Stark armor and the power stuff. Like, it felt better than Destiny to me. I liked the way it felt. The story was okay. I kind of got invested in it. Like, I keep saying, I don't think it's my game of the year, but I played Anthem for 12 hours, and I kind of had fun with it. Like, if they could make it more fun, I'm all for it, you know? I still would like to play it, to be honest. I still like to try it, but I just don't want to spend any money on it, really. I get that 100%. If it's on Game Pass. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> Is it? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm saying if it was on, if Game, it was Pass, on Game Pass. If it was on Game Pass. I would spend maybe at least 10 bucks on it. Motherfucker, <laughs> let's take the five minutes for the weekly uh, Lick Game Pass's balls. Bloodstained yeah. Jump Force. Uh, Bloodstained and Jump Force were this week on Game yeah. Pass. Uh, I can't wait to try out Bloodstain. Oh my god! I didn't get a chance to. Oh yeah, did you never play it? I did, I was going to, but then I I ended up spending the money on something else. On Jump Force? No, I think it was much. um. Jump I Force. think it was on Monster Hunter actually, or or something like that. 
It was it was another game that came out around the same time. D- just Dynamite, Dynamite lineup, Dynamite yeah, lineup. Bloodstained is great. It's one of my favorite games that's come out this year. Jump Force is one of the worst games that's ever been made in the history of all mankind. I thought it was fun. <laughs> Wasn't the best, but it was fine. Just dumb anime bullshit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I watch a lot of dumb anime. Um, he watches it more than me now. Yeah. So, well, not since Brooklyn Nine Nine. I finally found something else that's like eight seasons, so I can oh, just okay. sit there and watch it, watch it, watch it's it. It's really good. Great uh, character developments, <laughs> like an anime. It's also <laughs> it's also easy just to sit there and be like, next, 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 next. <laughs> So people are mad about Bioware. Uh, people are mad about Anthem. People are also mad about that about Project Resistance from Capcom. Uh, they responded this week to because you know Capcom felt like they were back on track. Single player Resident Evil games that are fun, and then suddenly they're like, "But do you know? Did you see Project Resistance? Yeah, it's I like did. it's a four on one asynchronous multiplayer Resident Evil game." I was like, "No, not again! <laughs> Come on, you've tried this twice already, and it's uh, three yeah. times, and it sucked every time." Um, so the there was a quote this week where the producer Matt Walker was like. It's a great survival horror experience, if non-traditional. I think we confuse things when we make things related to IP that don't stay true to the core spirit of the IP. But this project doesn't fall into that trap. I can't wait till the closed beta to have more people actually play it and see how it is a refreshing new take, but very surely survival horror at its core. People who have played it have been positive, and I hope that during the closed beta, even more people will have fun playing it. I hate it when, when, when dumb corporate mouthpieces say, like, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Also, it's the same thing it's always been. It's a stuffy room that d- hasn't had the door open. And also, a breath of fresh air. It's brand new, but still the same old thing. And it's like, look, it can't be both of those things. It's different, but it's the same. <laughs> it's the same, but, but it's different. different. Yeah. <laughs> um, personally, this is just such a deflating moment for me because I'm like, Capcom, you were on a roll. You're doing great. RE7, Devil May Cry 5. It wasn't my favorite Monster game. Monster Ice Board's really good. Monster Hunter, you know, RE2 remake. Like, you were, you stopped just putting everything out in HD or making dumb multiplayer games. Don't make another dumb multiplayer game. It's, Come on. Jesus. What Every multiplayer Resident Evil game has been awful. Was, was Umbrella Core two years ago? Probably not even. Uh, it was something like that. Pure, utter garbage. And Pro- Operation Raccoon City was shit on a shingle. Fuck, dude. And then there was the pre- PlayStation 2 ones, where I think it was as close as it came, but still, like... Well, there was a 3DS one as well. Was there? Yeah, and you want to know what was shitty about the 3DS one? Is that you couldn't remove the save off of the cartridge. So Wait, you, if, you, if, you, if you sold it used... Whoever bought it would just get your file. Oh, was it like the uh, the like mercenaries mode or whatever? Yeah, I think it was just called mercenaries. Yeah, and it was awful. And I kept trying to make that into a thing. Come on, Capcom, we just want to shoot zombies. I think Resident Evil Six also had like that <laughs> mode as well. Oh God, yes. It just was, stop it. Just it was st- insane. Stop it. Stop it. Whole thing. Re Eight. Stop it. Or Three. You've got all those. You got all those two assets. Put out Nemesis. I I've never played it before. I'd be more than happy. Yeah. Um. But you know, okay. So you can't, you can't. You're not getting a new Resident Evil game. You're not be able to shoot zombies. But I'll tell you where you can shoot zombies, Michael. That's in the new game plus mode for Days Gone. Oh, geez. Remember Days People Gone? People still playing Days Gone. Uh, I don't know, but they're putting out a new game plus mode. So. Good for all of the twelve people who probably play that game. That's all I have to say. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, from there, let's talk about some trailers. Uh, we got a trailer for Terminator Resistance. Which is it's a uh, crossover of Project Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they actually did that, by the way. Which is a Terminator game. It's set in the future. You're battling the robots. The least interesting place to set a Terminator game because the time travel is what makes Terminator interesting, not it's, not the future. It's only cool when you're RoboCop in the future, though. Like, right. Like that's the only time that uh, the future part of it's cool. Or Batman. Uh, or, yeah. Or Batman. Or Superman. <laughs> in that one Superman versus Terminator comic. Yeah. Uh, this game looks like garbage like i'm not gonna tell i'm not gonna sit here and say this looks like absolute trash like there's actually two parts during the trailer where the main character is just walking behind somebody looking at the back of their head while they're talking and i'm like these are the shots you picked for the trailer like just these uninterrupted shots of walking behind somebody while things nothing is happening around them um also it's made by the people that made that rambo game uh the, the shitty rambo game that was bad. I will still give it this, though. It's using the little laser sounds and the lasers for the guns, and I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. I always find it funny when a when a game like this, like they're using the font from original Terminator, 
And I always find it funny when we get things where it's like in the future, we still that people get so attached to that shit that they have to keep using like the dumb like the 80s font yeah. from Terminator even though it's like way out of date at this point. Super out of date. Uh I don't know. I think this game looks like trash. I, I think it looks like it's twenty dollars worth. <laughs> uh, if it's twenty dollars, it's like that Rambo game, and it's on rails. I might be willing to play it, but like, I will never beat it. I'll pay. I'll pay happily pay twenty dollars, maybe. Why don't they make a good one? Why don't they make like a Chrono Trigger style one where you got like go back and forth and like you do something and then the machines do something, so you got to go to a different era of human history? Like, what if the machines went back in time to the 1800s and you had to be sent back there and now it's a fucking cowboy Terminator game and like you're giving all the cowboys laser guns and they're all like, draw you silver plated son of a bitch <laughs> and then like blam, blam, blam and you know. Kind of reminds me of uh, Duke Nukem Time to Kill. Okay, that that's a not a good one. thing. But I love that game, <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it has an age well. I mean, like, why has it always got to be the fucking the future? The future part sucks. The future part is the beginning of the movie, and then we go back to the past, and it's better. Uh, or maybe you can make it like Hitman. Maybe you can make it like a Hitman game where, like, you have to kill John Connor, but you have to do it in a way not to trip off the resistance, so you have to go back to the 1980s and, like, set up a hitman style John Connor trap and then turns out like, oh shit, but now a new leader of the resistance has been formed. And you gotta walk up to him and be like, I am not a robot or whatever while doing the robot. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Agent 47 is already a Terminator, so it doesn't matter. Which why it's why I'm so happy about this Haven Island trailer because Haven Island's coming out by the time you hear this in two days. It's the last uh, like ground based DLC. Yeah. So like there's the sniper missions, but then like you and I played the bank was the first one. Yes. And this was the second one. And it's on this tropical island where like people go to get away. I don't know if you remember in the bank, part of it was like getting the names of these people in the secret organization. I'm sure that going to this island is going to be to either kidnap or kill some of them and gain more information. It looks beautiful. Oh, it looks so pretty. The commercial like the fake commercials creepy on its own though yeah because it's just about like get away and like we'll take care of all the horrible shit you probably have done yep it's like oh god this is creepy and it's the one thing that the one thing that the hitman franchise has been incredibly good at is uh not making you feel bad about any of the people that you kill <laughs> i do love the idea that like it's a secret place but they still made the production money to make a commercial right well, you know, you can advertise for it. You know what it kind of reminds me? Oh, my God. I think I might have just realized what this is. Is this like uh, Hitman goes to the what the fire Festival was supposed to be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a bunch of influencers on an island, and you're just like, take that, Demi Lovato. <laughs> Hitman versus Blink-182. Yep. Uh, that's who was supposed to play or something, if I remember. I, I, I love this trailer. I love this franchise. I love this game. Last week, they had a challenge, and the reward was an emetic grenade, so you can throw it into a group of people, and then it makes all of them throw up at the same time, <laughs> and I'm like, yes! That sounds awful and uh, amazing at the same time. It's pretty great. Also, it looks so beautiful. Like, it just it looks so pretty. They put uh, a lot of work into this thing. Yeah. So, we'll be seeing that next week. Um, you know, probably, probably pretty early on. Depends on how many times i got to play it to get real good at it. I don't want to just, like, fuck around. Show you guys how bad I am at Hitman. <laughs> uh, we also got a trailer for The Surge 2, which is also launching next week. Uh, trailer looks all right. I, I just, I guess I hope that they... I finally figured out what I didn't like about The Surge was that the character builds all felt very the same. Like, the difference between a heavy character and a light character and a medium character all felt kind of identical. Um, I feel like... I don't even remember the first one very well. It was, like... Dark Souls, but you had this like mech armor on. I think it was, on, I think it was free for plus recently, or might, they might be thinking it was something else. I, I think so. I think it's been out there a few times. In any case, I mean, like it's it's kind of well beloved by people that are into the kind of Dark Soulsy spinoff. You know, stuff like Neo and uh, yeah, they, they made Lords of the Fallen. Remember, which was like one of one of the first. Oh like, yeah, that's right. Ones. Um, I'm looking up the first one real quick. But, yeah, I mean, the whole thing about it was that human beings had the – or that you were in this area, this, like, science place where, like, humans had had these exoskeletons grafted onto them and then connected to their oh, brain. Yeah. This was – yeah, this was free for plus a couple months ago. And then, it, like, the the AIs started taking them over and kind of making them into weird zombies. Uh, and then, But you had to stop them by hitting them with giant axes and stuff. 
I don't know. People liked it a lot. I didn't really care for it, but I'm willing to give the second one a shot. Yeah, when it was free for plus, I watched the trailer and I'm like, I don't know what any of this is about. <laughs> and then yeah. I, I was going to try it and I forgot. But, yeah. but I'll tell you what I'm ready to give 100% a shot. And that's the Untitled Goose Game. I love everything <laughs> about this trailer, by the way. <laughs> its trailer is one minute and 58 seconds of a goose being an asshole. Yeah. And, like, that's what this game is, is what if you were a goose, and what if you were an asshole, what if you were an asshole goose? Basically, what if you're a goose? Yeah. Because that's just what gooses do. They're just I don't giant know. pricks. This goose is pretty tricky. He, like, unties his kid's shoe to make him drop his drop his plane and then he gets the plane and he runs after him and he like trips over his shoelace and then his glasses fall off and then the goose just grabs his glasses as soon as i can tell the goose isn't doing anything it's just being a fucking asshole to people that's like, my favorite part of the trailer is just how much he fucks with this one specific kid yeah there's it's one point so fucked. That, that makes me laugh so much where he just like he pulls the letter out of a out of a door and then like a little bit later in the trailer he just drops it off a bridge into the water like just like yeah fuck you I'm a goose <laughs> it's such a giant fuck you is that the thing like it's so out of the way to tell a guy to fuck himself <laughs> yeah it's great I cannot wait to play it probably next week sometime I already got everything it came out later this week I actually may buy this later uh, yeah. And last but not least, we had a release date trailer for John Wick Hex. Uh, that weird, weird, weird Mike Bithel game. It's coming out on October 8th, uh, so not that long. Yeah, not very not very far from now. I feel like they maybe wanted it to come out in time with Parabellum, but then, like, didn't. Well, they announced it, like, a week or two prior to Parabellum coming out. Though. Right, it yeah. It was really late when they announced it. It was kind of surprising. Also, as near as I can tell... Mike Bithell is just one guy. <laughs> like, I don't know yeah. if he has a whole huge team or anything, but this game also seems like it could have been made by, like, one guy working his ass off for four months, right? It's really, really fascinating. Uh, but it's so weird, like, the stylization and the neon and the colors. And if it wasn't for Mike Bithell, I, I might be a little bit more... I don't know if it's Bithell or Bittell, uh, but I might be a little bit more, um, like, nervous about this. But everything that guy's made has been really good, so yeah. I really have enjoyed. He's mecha again mechanically, his games have been very solid. Um, so I don't know. I think it looks real good. Yeah, it looks real good. It Definitely. looks really interesting. Yeah. Uh, from there, just a couple more quick things. Uh, After Party finally got a launch date, which is good because I've been waiting for that game for a long time. Oh, okay. It's where you and your buddy go to hell and try to outdrink the devil. Uh, it's by the person that made Oxen Free, and oh, it looks geez. amazing, and I love it. And it's coming out on October 29th. And not just that, but, uh-oh, Game Pass plug number two. It's going to be on Game Pass also. That's fucking rad. Same day. So, uh, yeah, if you want to outdrink Satan, there you go. Also, uh, in case you wanted to get one of those Super Nintendo controllers for your Switch for the Super Nintendo games that are now on the Switch, you can now get them. They're on sale. You have to be a PlayStation or a uh, Nintendo online member, yeah. and they're 30 bucks, and they don't seem like they're worth it, but... Who knows? Like Maybe you're really into that sort of thing. Maybe so. Maybe so. And last but not least, let's do a little bit more Borderlands because last week Pornhub came out and said that over the launch week of uh, Borderlands, there was a 12,000% increase in people searching on Pornhub for Borderlands 3, Borderlands Moxie, Borderlands Hentai, Borderlands Lilith. That is a lot. Uh, yep, yeah, a lot of Borderlands uh, things. So apparently... The first thing that people think of when they get a brand new video game is like, man, I love this game. Now I want to go jerk off to this game, but it doesn't have enough tits in it. Pornhub, search Borderlands. Save me, Pornhub. Pornhub, search Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, just goes to show. I, I love the fact that Pornhub puts out detailed statistics about things that happen on their website. Pornhub just loves talking about porn, and God bless them for telling us these things. Yep, so that's that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to answer some questions. So everybody stick around, and we'll see you in a minute. And we're back. Michael, are you ready to answer the burning questions of Rage Select? Do they have to be burning? They're always burning. They're on fire. <laughs> They're fiery. They're spitting hot fire questions right into us, into my inbox at mail at Uh Yeah, 
Yeah, they're always fiery. And this first one is so <laughs> hot. It's so hot right now. Brought to you by Heat That's right. <laughs> uh, John writes in, and he specifically says with no H, it says, uh, Greetings, Jeff and Michael. My travel buddy and I recently went to Huntsville, Alabama to visit the NASA Rocket Center and Rocket Park, a.k.a. Space Camp. While there, they had several interactive exhibits that feature things like launching a rocket, docking to a space station orbit, and even a lunar landing simulator. Each one had a daily high score. Well, my friend plays a lot of Kerbal Space Program, and as a result, shattered the high score tables at these exhibits. His lunar landing score was double the second place score, despite taking 19 seconds longer than the actual Apollo 11 mission. So, Jeff, do you think you could come close to NASA's benchmarks with your many hours of Kerbal Space Program training? And that's from John. Uh... No. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, may, I'm, I'm not very good at landing. Um, okay. Landing, uh, the whole concept of landing is a stone cold bitch, right? Like, oh, okay. I don't know if you know this, but I mean, I don't know how many people actually know this, but like two weeks ago, uh, India had sent a lunar lander uh, to the moon. Like, they did oh. their own lunar lander that they created. And uh, it was like 100 feet off of the surface of the moon, and they lost contact. And it's basically been assumed that it crashed. That's amazing. Uh, and that they just they crashed and died, and that, you know, that just didn't happen. And then I found out that I believe it was like uh, six months earlier, six months like earlier this year, that like, um, I think Israel sent a lunar mission that also crashed. Like, they got there, oh. and then when they were landing, it just, it fucked up, and the if you, like, that's the thing about landing, right, is that if you land too hard, you, you're dead. <laughs> like that's, I'm going to have to look these up, because that's kind of amazing. Yeah, I, I remember I was on, uh, I was on. like Mount Everest, just full of dead bodies. <laughs> I, fe I felt like of all the things that I do on Twitter, that this was, like, the most, this is like the 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 best actual. I mean, it wasn't good, but like I was following actual news where I was like, "Oh my god, India sent somebody to the moon." I didn't even know that happened. Oh my god, they lost contact. I'm so and I was like refreshing. Like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And they were just like, "Yeah, no, no contact." Apparently, the uh, the delivery vehicle is still in orbit, so they're still doing like orbital tests and stuff. But uh, apparently, the the lander that was just. That's nope. so fucked. So amazing, but fucked. Yeah, yeah. Space is a bitch. It like, really is. Space is a bit, and the thing is that because weight, right, mass is so like such a thing. Um, I can imagine. You know, have you ever seen what like the lunar lander looks like? It's like made out of like tin foil and a, like coat hangers and shit. Yeah, like it's it's <laughs> not great. <laughs> like and the thing is that you don't need much, right? Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere yeah. or much gravity. But on the other hand, like these things. Are made to get their, you know, Delta V fuel, blah 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 blah. Jeff's going f fucking nerdy nuts over here, um, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I would be good enough. I might be able to dock. I might be able to launch. It's kind of like you know how you say it's easy to take off in an airplane, but like the hardest part about flying an airplane is landing. Yes, because you know. You're trying to come. You're trying to. You've already defied the Lord by going into the air <laughs> like a bird, and now you, the Lord, is just waiting for you to come back down. And it's just like, ooh, I got you now. <laughs> now you pay for your hubris. Just ask Harrison Ford. <laughs> That's right, dude. Crashes all the time. That's right. Yep. Uh, so no, sorry, John. I don't believe that I could out. I don't know. I bet I could probably get a pretty good. Pretty good score. I bet I could do better than like the kids that are there, right? Like, probably, yeah. probably outperform the children. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, I probably do that. Take that twelve-year-old and right. shove him to the side. You're I better at Fortnite than me, but fuck you. I don't think I'm not going to be like Buzz. Step aside, Buzz Aldrin. I got this. <laughs> Hold my beer. And Buzz Aldrin's like, "How did you get a beer in Space Camp?" And I'm like, "I brought my own." It's like I got it from you, Buzz. Remember? <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah, oh, yeah." Um, I punched out a non-believer. So yeah, that, I'm sorry, Michael. That one didn't really have a lot to do with. No, with, with I've you. I've been to uh, to NASA itself actually. What? That's yeah, in Houston. Uh, well, yeah, like, legitimately. Mission so. Control. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool. <sighs> Grr. I mean, I don't know why I'm mad at you. I could go there. Yeah, I could just do that myself. I did it for um, was it a JROTC trip. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I was a kid, I wanted to go to space camp so bad, and then I saw that movie Space Camp, and I wanted to go to space camp even worse. Because they had that robot, the little ball oh, yeah. robot. It was just like, <laughs> I'm a robot. And then I watched Flight of the Navigator, and I wanted to go on to space in the navigator ship, even though that he, like, what? It's like, he goes, like, into the future, right? It's like, I don't remember. It's been a long time. It's like he disappears, and he goes, and they go into space, and they come back, and because of the time dilation, it's been 10 years, and his family is all like, what happened? And he's like, it was yesterday. 
Look, I got a friendly friend. That movie is weird. That was back when Disney used to make movies about space that would scare the fuck out of you. They were willing to do some fucking weird shit back then. Like the black hole. Yeah. I do not know. Like, I don't, I mean, I, what, there's isn't that whole thing that people come up with, like, oh, you could never do this today. And I'm just like, I don't think you could make the black hole. No. Or I think if you made the black hole and then it was, like, PG rated and you were marketing it to children and then children had to watch fucking Maximilian come out with his goddamn like, fan blade scissor hands. And, like, at the end of that, doesn't the whole place fall into the black hole? And then, like, I think so, yeah. Like, a few people get away and then the science, the crazy science. I need to watch The Black Hole again. I need to watch that again. Just don't look it up on Pornhub. It's a different movie. Yes. <laughs> Do not look up The Black Hole on Pornhub. <laughs> uh, Kenny writes in and says, uh, Hey, Jeff and Mike, let me start off by recommending new anime, which stood out to me in 2019. Demon Slayer and Dr. Stone. Hope you enjoy it and talk about it during the next podcast. I know you said you've been burned out this year on anime, but I hope you give it a shot, even if you haven't seen it yet. I, I've looked at Demon Slayer, and I'm I, again, I'm just like, I am really burned out on medieval anime. I hear it's really good, though. Uh, which it very well may be. I mean, like, there's so many medieval anime. But Same with uh, Dr. Stone, because I think that's on Adult Swim right now. Uh, Dr. Stone I've actually kind of had on the list, but I haven't gotten around to watching yet. Like, the premise seems interesting, because apparently it's just like, Everybody on the earth got turned to stone, and then this one guy like turned himself not into stone, and he like rev- figured out how to revive a few people. And but he's like a scientist, and so he's trying to like rebuild science in the world. So there's apparently like like a real throughput of kind of MacGyver science going on in that huh. show. And I'm Did like, I know that I, I like science. Uh, you well, you never know it from looking at the. Well, I didn't. I didn't know anything about it. I just heard it was called Doctor Stone. I was like, I could be anything because animes are fucking weird. <laughs> that could be about a baseball team uh, from Okinawa. Exactly. That could just be his nickname, and he's like a boxer or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, shit's crazy in Data Bay. Uh, but Kenny has an actual question. Kenny says, uh, my friend and I recently got into an argument as to whether or not hot dog subs and hamburgers can all be categorized under the sandwich. Uh, you know these are all separate things. He says, of course, hot dogs and subs and hamburgers have two pieces of bread with stuff in the middle. Therefore, they fall under sandwich. Do you guys agree or disagree? Your little patron, Kenny. Well, subs are literally called sub sandwiches, so that destroys the point of that one. Um Hamburgers, I could see is that way uh-huh. because like everything else that has the bun part of it is a sandwich, like um, like a chopped brisket sandwich, okay, kind of thing. It has the. Do same you think a hamburger is a sandwich? I think it is. Okay, personally. So, do you think a quesadilla is a sandwich? It's got two pieces of bread with stuff good. between it. A quesadilla is bread, though. It's a tortilla. That's bread. It's a, it's a taco. <laughs> but it's bread. Tortillas are bread. <laughs> no, they're not. Yes, they are. Not really. They're made out of flour. Well, they're made out of uh, <laughs> different <laughs> things <laughs> than that are bread. They're <laughs> completely different beasts, is what I'm saying. No, they're not. Yeah, they totally are. <laughs> they're just so we're bread. not having this <laughs> argument. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Kenny! <laughs> Uh, Flour tortillas are not <laughs> bread, goddamn. <laughs> they're tortillas. <laughs> what's the, what's what's the difference? The difference is what they're made out of. They're not specifically the same types of grains or anything. That's why you get those wheat yeah, tortillas yeah. that are fucking weird looking. You get wheat bread. Flour no. tortillas are made out of flour. Bread is made out of flour. Wheat tortillas are made out of wheat flour. Wheat bread is made out of wheat flour. <laughs> it's the way it's. We're not have like because then everything is bread at that point. That's that's specifically like that. If it's made out of well, wait, like okay, so are we saying what are you saying? Are you saying cake is bread? That's what you're saying. I'm not saying cake is bread. <laughs> that's exactly what you're saying. It's got a higher sugar content. Flour. But then this, 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 the same thing, though. <laughs> Noodles are not bread. But that's what I'm saying, it's because a, it's a different beast. Look, it We're is having a, a different <laughs> argument now is what's it, happening here. It is a, it is a, it is a dry uh, uh, item made from flour that you put meat and cheese inside of, and sometimes you put another piece of flour. If it goes flour, meat, flour, in my opinion, you could classify it as a sandwich. And I call bullshit on that. Because you don't put <laughs> cake and then ham and then more cake, you know. You just gave the internet ideas is all you're doing right now. <laughs> oh, somebody's already put ham. and Somebody's already made a ham cake. I'm I sure it's an epic meal time thing that. or something. I, 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 my argument from your – because I'm just being a jackass. My <laughs> argument from your perspective is – Fla- uh, is bread it has yeast in it and is leavened. It rises, right? Tortillas are just because tortillas are made of the same thing. It's like flour and, and water and salt, and then you. Well, there's a, there's a, it, there's a few other things in bam, there. Bam, but, but yeah, like, lard. Right, but but um, but bread rises. Here's the thing about the actual rise. question, though. Uh huh. Is that I don't know about <laughs> hot dogs, though. Hot dogs are a different kind of thing. Okay, what about when you go to Subway? And they cut the bread, but they still leave it connected at the bottom, and then they put stuff in there. Is that a hot dog? 
Because <laughs> technically it's just well, one piece of bread that's been opened up like a like well, the, a book. And well, the thing the thing about a hot dog is it really comes down to the actual piece of food, the piece asshole. of salt, the piece of meat that's in it. I guess is what it comes down to. Okay, so but tell me more. Made, but you made me think. So if you put it. ham in a hot dog bun, is it a sandwich? <laughs> but if you put a hot dog in a hot dog bun, it's not a sandwich. Yes. What if you roll the ham up and then put it in a hot dog bun so it looks like a ham dog? Wait, say that last part again. Okay, so you take a piece of ham and roll it up uh -huh. and then put it in a hot dog bun. Well, it's not made of what hot dogs are made out of. So, so do but hot dogs are a fucking weird hodgepodge of anything. So, so but does that mean that like bratwurst is different than a hot dog? Well, see, here's the thing. What about, about a veggie dog? Does well, that count as a sandwich? Well, here's the thing about hot dogs specifically is that hot dogs are called, or mostly called hot dogs purely because of what it is, is itself. Because Lips I've eaten, and assholes. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. <laughs> the thing is that, like, I mean, you can eat hot dogs without the hot dog bun part of it. Sure, that, cut up in macaroni. Like, exactly. They're just called hot dogs because the because the actual meat part of it. Right. Which is why I don't know if they're considered really a sandwich part of it. Because I've eaten. Because you know, when when you're poor and you don't have money for hot dog buns, you just grab a piece of bread and sort of wrap it around it. Kind sure. Of thing. And then if you're like me, you wrap two of them around it because you want more breading. If you get a, if you get like a, uh, like an Elgin sausage and then wrap it in a tortilla, is that a hot dog? No, that's um. There's an actual name for that actually. Yeah, sausage wrap. Yeah. Uh, for, there's actually another name for it, but I can't remember what it is. Okay. It's it's something my grandma used to call it. By the way, my 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 thing on this is who the fuck cares? That's the thing. Uh, <laughs> this is one of those things the internet gets into an argument about. I'm just like, who cares? Call them all sandwiches. Call none of them sandwiches. Call them blarger flargs. Like I don't give a shit. Just give me a hot dog. Why do you keep asking me this and not giving me a hot dog? I think my favorite question is uh, is a is a pizza an open sandwich? <laughs> sure. Well, to me, to me, this kind of goes back to I the whole just an open calzone. Like, what is art? And I'm like, it's everything. All right. <laughs> I'm tired of of like, sure, a quesadilla is a sandwich. You'd be like, give me that sandwich, and I'd be like, quesadilla. And like, yeah, okay. I mean, the thing is that at the end of the day. All of these items have a different name. They do. So when you're at a, a cookout, right, and the people have, they're like, I got hamburgers, I got hot dogs. Which one do you want? You're like, give me a sandwich. And they'd be like, <laughs> do you want a hamburger or a hot dog? Sandwich. And you'd be like, hot dog or hamburger? <laughs> like, I can't read your mind. Can't do nothing. Here's, you a, know, here's a sub sandwich. Or if I got a bunch of quesadillas and you were like, hey, hand me another one of those sandwiches. And I was like, you mean the quesadillas? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, here. Like, uh, whatever, I guess. I, uh, whatever floats your boat, buddy. You do whatever you want to. I mean, if you point at a thing and go, uh, 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 I'll hand it to you. Like, I don't, <laughs> it doesn't See, matter what you call it. The real question that you need to know is that is crab juice definitely better than Mountain Dew? It's crab juice? Exactly. Like, squeeze a crab and then get the juices out of it? Yeah, it's a crab juice. Is it better mm -hmm. than Mountain Dew? Exactly. I, I, have you ever seen that episode of The Simpsons? No. There's a, yeah, it's, it's uh that the old Simpsons episode, uh, Homer versus the State of New York. Okay. And he he goes to that um that uh, that Middle Eastern like vending dude or whatever. Okay. He's like, I only have two drinks: Mountain Dew and the crab juice. <laughs> and he's like, Ew! I'll take the crab juice. <laughs> right. I mean, like you know, is tomato juice a soup? I mean, well, it's tomato soup sometimes. What's the difference between tomato juice and tomato soup? It's and the, is it? It's the specific. Um, no, uh, I know it's how thick it is. I guess is <laughs> I know, but like, is there enough of a difference for you? Like, if I put, if I put tomato, if I took the question is a cereal soup. If I took V eight and put it in a bowl and heated it up and gave it to you as a soup, and you never knew that it came out of a can of V eight, would you be like, this tomato soup is kind of weird? But I don't know, I kind of like it. Like, you have any oyster crackers to put inside of it? <laughs> like, is turkey chili chili? Or is it specifically turkey chili? Who cares? What are your thoughts on F-Cereal soup? I don't care. No, I, I already told you my <laughs> thoughts on all of that. Is that like, I know that this is like a, an internet brain teaser, but I feel like this is the reason why nobody knows that India sent a man to the moon, uh, two men to the moon who died. It's exactly why. It's because why. we're just like, sandwich, not sandwich, sandwich, not sandwich. It's exactly why that happens. <laughs> I mean. Uh, this keeps people up at night. It, like, if you want to get pedantic about all of these classifications, no, cereal is not a soup. Soup is cooked. Cereal is not cooked. There you go. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No, it's a hot dog because it has a sausage in it. Is like a summer sausage sandwich a sandwich? Yes, because you cut the summer sausage up and put it on a sandwich. Yes. In the same way. Also, the sub is literally called a subway or a sub, not subway, a sub sandwich. So also, a lot of people. destroys the point of that part of the argument. A lot of people don't realize that like a submarine sandwich and a hoagie. How many times have we, how much time have we spent on this one question? Oh, like 100, <laughs> 100, 100 hours, 200 hours? Like a submarine sandwich and a hoagie and a hero, like these mean different.
different things. Like they actually, I worked with a guy named Hoagie. Have different, like they're, you know, they are interchangeable, but they're not supposed to be. So I don't know, man. You guys just punch each other, and then whoever falls down first. I mean, don't do that. I'm not endorsing that, but totally do that. But do it I in a Superman in a Doomsday costume, and then it'll be great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just tell your friend if your if your friend insists on calling them sandwiches, then just be an asshole about it. Where you go to a cookout and he's like, "Hey, will you get me another sandwich?" And I'll Did be he like, "Say it was a sandwich or not?" No, he said. I argue, no, they are all separate things. Oh, okay. He said that of course, hot dogs, subs, and hamburgers have two pieces of bread with stuff in the middle. Therefore, therefore, they fall under sandwich. Well, the sub one is the only one that I'll argue with him on that one. To be honest. Well. Yeah, I don't that's think kind of the point. Well, of I don't know. <laughs> no, here, here's the thing. I don't think he's saying that subs aren't sandwiches. I think he's saying that that the argument is that everything is a sandwich, oh, okay. and that all of those things fall under the moniker of sandwich. He is arguing, no, they all do not fall under the moniker of sandwich. Only a sub would be like a sandwich. So. All right. Anyway, thank you, Kenny, for giving me the ability to screw with Michael for ten minutes. <laughs> that flower thing is going to bother me all day. What? It woke me up, though. <laughs> what? The, the flour and tortillas? They're flour tortillas. Yes, they're flour, flour tortillas or tortillas. <laughs> I will die on that hill. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Deliciously. Chris starts off by just saying, movies. Uh, hey, hey, Jeff and Michael, I just saw It Chapter 2 in theaters and had a great time with my friends. We all enjoyed it. Uh, there used to be a time where I would have to wait for it to come out on DVD or Redbox because I hated going to the movies in my town. It was dirty with bad floors, walls, seats, and even screen. Had worn out chairs, and they were so close together, you always kicked the, the seat of the person in front of you. You lean back and hit your knees. Also, people would be talking on their damn phones, texting with their light on, etc. But at last, my town built a luxury theater with everything clean, good screen, sound, reclining chairs. Everything is super great. Also, they're now strict with the rules, and I like that. So, uh, so Jeff, I understand that you may not like the movie theater experience, but my question is, what is the worst movie experience you've ever had? Not a reflection on the movie, but on the people around you, or maybe some people got into a fight or the lights came on. For me, it was when I went to see The Dark Knight Rises and a group of punk-ass teenagers got into a fight near the front row with 25 minutes left to go. The screen went dark with the sound still on, the lights went on, and the police came in, and it lasted for about two minutes before the credits, so you missed the epic fight scene between Batman and all that. Also, we didn't get a refund. I was so enraged, I swore off movie going for two years. Thanks, uh, and sorry for the long email. Um, and then, and that's from Chris. And he says, P.S., for fuck's sake, whose dick do I got to suck for you guys to play Five Nights at Freddy's VR? Is it Puppet Jeff? JK, you guys are great, but seriously, LOL. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm going to save it, make Jason play it at Christmas time or something. I don't know. Okay. I'm not playing it, that's for sure. I'm not playing it. Just Jesus, no. I'm not I playing it. I said I would do it. Yeah. He, he's, he's very adamant about it. Yep. Uh, what's your worst movie going experience? Um, this one's a recent memory one. Okay. Um, I was just when I watched Endgame for the second time. Uh, I went to watch Endgame, and then within five minutes, a baby started crying mm. in a three hour movie. Mm -hmm. uh, that baby didn't stop for about two of those hours. Oh, good. And everyone, I wanted to say something so bad, but I was just. Did you go get a manager? So didn't want it. Like, she, well, they kept leaving. For a little bit, for so it was gone for a second. Oh, to like comfort the baby, and then they'd come back and it would start again. And yep. this went on for like the the only good thing is it stopped in the final battle. Fucking luckily, yeah. But it was just so bad, and I was just like, I just want to murder a small child so badly. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty recent one. Um, other than that, I don't have too many of them because I mostly forgot about them over time. Uh, I've got I've got a few short ones. Uh, and then I've got my the PS de resistance. So oh, like, yeah, go for it. The uh, when I went to go see Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol, I went at Christmas with my family. Uh -huh. I went to the Alamo. I sit next to this guy. He was breathing in and out through his mouth extremely loudly. Just, <gasps> just the entire movie. And I was like, I can't. And I was like, the person next to him and my entire family was down the row from me. Oh jeez. And I was like. Well, what am I supposed to do? Put up a car? Because it's the Alamo, yeah. where you can you can tell people to shut up. But like, what am I supposed to do? Be like, hey, this guy keeps breathing. You guys shut him up. That's harder to explain. Yeah. But like, I I I don't know how many other people feel this way, Michael. But I don't like the sound of people like chewing or or smacking their lips. It or depends like, on uh, how like it's breathing, wetly breathing. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
And I mean, what was I supposed to do? Tell the guy like, "Hey, man, can you just fucking stop breathing? Just hold your breath for like." I mean, an hour. who knows? Like, I say, I'd be like, "Hey, can you? Can you? Like, how would you tell a perfect stranger? Can you please breathe through your nose? That would be a weird thing to ask another person. It really would, because uh, he was obviously into the movie. His mouth was fucking hanging open. Uh, when I went to go see episode three at a midnight showing, um, there was a giant uh, family that sat behind me, and they were basically just talking at full volume and just like, oh, damn, like the entire time they were just reacting Jesus. to everything <laughs> and then talking to I can't you believe he did that? I can't believe he did that. What happened? And then I was just like, because that was like a two and a half hour movie. And I was That's just so like, bad. Uh, and it was the first time I saw it. I was like, here we go. Here's the dramatic conclusion of the prequel trilogy. And just these yahoos. Um, and when I went to go see um, Wally, I think, uh, there was a kid two rows back from me that kept loudly asking his mother questions about the movies and then running up and back and forth down the aisle. Yeah, that'll happen. Um, and I couldn't do anything about that. This is regular theater. But the worst is when I went to go see Deadpool for the second time with my friend, and we went to the Alamo uh, uh, up at um, um, uh, 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 Lake Line. Oh, okay. So we went up to Alamo Lake Line. We sat down. My friend hadn't seen Deadpool. I watched in the theater. I was like, I like this movie so much. Do you want to go watch Deadpool? And she was like, yeah. I did want to see that movie. I'm like, cool. So I sat down. She sat down. The movie started. About five minutes into the movie... A man and a woman walked. We were in the last row. A man and a woman came in, walked up, sat down. I was sitting on the right. My friend was sitting on the left next to me, and they sat down right beside me, this woman and this man. They were drunk. Oh, jeez. And this woman <laughs> wanted to talk to me at the Alamo, where you will get kicked out straight up for yeah. talking. And she was just like, she was like, oh, hey, how's it going? Like kind of whispering, but kind of loudly enough that everybody around could hear and then like, um, uh, and then she was, <laughs> she was like, yeah, my boyfriend and I went to the that the, that witch movie, and uh, we thought it was Deadpool, but it wasn't. And it took like ten minutes for us to figure out that it wasn't Deadpool. And I was like, uh huh, uh huh. Like I was trying to make it clear, I don't want to yeah. fucking talk to you, crazy person. Like I don't want to get kicked out of here too. And she's like, yeah. So what happened in the first ten minutes? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, she kept talking to me. Like, she kept asking me. She was like, "Is that guy Deadpool?" And I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "I, I don't, I don't think they've said yet." I, don't, I was like, trying to keep my <laughs> my my answers as short as possible because I mean, like, I didn't want to be an asshole. That's and she was so obviously awful. drunk, and she obviously expected me to talk back to her. And then a manager came up and kicked the boyfriend out. Like, a, no, a manager came up. And like walked across and went over to the boyfriend because the boyfriend was also talking to people. Her like when she wasn't talking to me, she was talking to her boyfriend. Yeah, and came and she and she was just like, "Listen, you guys, you gotta stop talking. Like the movie's on. It's the rules here. You gotta stop talking. If you don't stop talking, uh, you're gonna have to leave." And the boyfriend stands up and he's like, "Fuck this theater and fuck you, bitch!" <laughs> and like just fucking storms out. And I was like. And, and I was like, oh, and he was just the whole time. He's like, motherfucker, I can tell me what to do. I'll fucking do what I want to do. Fuck it. <laughs> All right. Blah, blah, blah. He left. And then, like, the lady stayed. Because <laughs> I was like, thank God. Now she will go to where her boyfriend is. And she stayed there, and she kept watching the movie. And she kept asking me questions. And by now, she was asking me questions of things that had happened in the movie that she had missed because her boyfriend was screaming at the Alamo person. Oh, my God. And so I ignored it for another five minutes, and then she just left, and I was like, thank God I've already seen this movie before because I didn't want to get into a fight with some <laughs> some dude in a No Fear t-shirt in the parking lot. Like That's amazing. But, like, how do you not know? Like, this I... is the Alamo. They're, they're, they're very clear that if you, do, if you do this... It's always the drunk ones. The drunk ones don't really, like, seem to forget as soon as they get in there. And I'll, I'll, I'll give one story, though. This isn't a bad experience so much as I probably gave someone a bad experience. Okay. It was when Paranormal Activity came out. Uh -huh. uh, my friend was still working at the uh, Palladium IMAX in San Antonio that I used to work at. So he's like, yeah, let's go watch this movie. I fell asleep <laughs> midway through it. Well, it's a boring fucking and movie. Started <laughs> and according to him, because I didn't know this, I started snoring loudly. Okay. <laughs> he and didn't wake you up? He He kept nudging me. And I kept just like, like apparently I was just like, fuck, fuck you, no, kind of like no, smacking him, no. And then eventually, like, I finally just woke up on my own, I guess, at some point. And he, he if, I don't, even, I don't know how long I was asleep because I, because he kept fucking with me, so I, I assume I wasn't asleep for long. Yeah. 
But he's like, yeah, everyone, everyone's pissed. <laughs> I was like, what? This movie's so fucking boring. Like, nothing's happening. Like, do something. <laughs> the lady stood there for two hours. Like, and it, w- it was it was worse for the fact that I, we had traveled for a little while too, right. which wasn't going to make it any better because nothing's happening. Yeah. Like even when it's like, oh, the door moved. I'm like, dude, I've seen <gasps> scarier shit when I'm a by myself at two in the morning. This yeah. Is stupid. <laughs> and yeah. When it starts picking up. I'm like, none of this fucking matters. This is stupid. I watched Paranormal Activity with my friends, and when it was done, the same girl that I went to to the uh, Deadpool with was like. Did that actually happen? Are those people okay? And I was like, <laughs> "Yes, they're okay." Here's their IMDb pages. They are actors. Yes. <laughs> like, so are you sure? And I'm like, "I'm sure." Here's the director of what you just saw. Like, here's the interview with the peoples. <laughs> remember Blair Witch? It's like Blair Witch. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see what else we got here. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man writes in and says, uh, "So, Jeff, you want questions? Okay, I've got." A question for you wonderful lords of rage and all things that inspire ire. Why doesn't my dad love me? What? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I just got out of seeing Ad Astra and adored it. It had me thinking about themes of parenthood and media. Uh, In these thoughts, I've struggled to think of many games that deal with parental relationships in a meaningful way. Something more than living up to a family legacy or the hero's mission being based around a dead parent like Tomb Raider. Can you think of any games that tackle the subject matter? And if not, do you think there's a reason for that? Thanks to keep on praising the one true Lord. And that's from your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. Well, there's one we all know, right? Um, God of War. Oh, last yeah, year no, was, God, of, God of War is definitely on there. Dad of War was was great. Uh, it's very that. much about the relationship between the dad and the son. Yep. Although like, I haven't played it, but I heard that a lot. <laughs> 100%. Uh, uh, I've talked about it before, but Kiryu is uh, one of the best... Uh, dad figures uh, because oh, like yeah. Kiryu rescues the, the, the his his adopted daughter in the first game yeah. and like when she's a, t- a toddler and then he like you know in the second game he's still kind of banging around in the third game uh, you know he quits being a Yakuza to run an orphanage where his adopted daughter and because he was an orphan as well yeah. and so he's like a dad figure in the sixth one he's a granddad he's carrying because his daughter gets hit oh, by okay. a car and he has to take care of his daughter's daughter uh, so he's carrying the baby around you know we had the trailer with him oh, yeah, bouncing right. the baby and stuff so kiryu is probably one of the better dads um the last of us is very much about a, a for the sort of parental relationship itself like it's not they're, they're not actually related but it's very much that sort of thing it's like alien right or aliens when we, kind of we, yeah know. it's very close to that except a lot more in except depth the, i guess because of how long it is except that joel is a fucking monster <laughs> he's the worst yeah he but sucks ass it's one of those, the thing is that like joel still like it's still about joel's love for that person though yeah like like it's one of those things where it's like he's a terrible person when it comes down to it but he still does it because of a parental love kind of thing and I, <laughs> I've told the story a few times, which is just that, like, when the ending of The Last of Us happens, I got, I got really gung ho about, be about doing exactly what Joel wanted to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Like everybody I talked to, they're like, yeah, I was like, I wanted to stop it. I was like, I was like, oh no, I went in there and I shot that doctor right in the fucking face, <laughs> like the second he, I am allowed to. <laughs> uh, okay. I was like, I'm saving this girl. Like, fuck you guys. But I helped raise my niece, so that was like part of it. Here's, those are actually some pretty good ones. Uh, Bioshock Two actually has a pretty good because the oh yeah the isn't the big sister is the son of the guy that well, becomes the big daddy. Well, no, because the, no. the 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 big sister is um like you play the big daddy that was the, the alpha. big daddy of the of that little sister specifically. Right. Yeah. And so um, she's she's one of the ones that gets raised if you when you be, do the good ending of the first one. Oh, okay. Is what it was. Okay. But like, but it's still very much about this weird. Weird, weird parental kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of that with the whole little sister mechanic about the fact yeah. that there's a game mechanic of you taking care of a little girl. Like, that's kind of weird. And Bioshock 3, I guess, would technically fall in that category, too. Bioshock Infinite? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because the whole thing, but I, if I go into it, it spoils too much. Right. Kind of thing. Um, um, Grand Theft Auto 5 is on this list, and I was, I was, it made me curious, but then I remembered like Michael's whole plot with his family. His whole family thing, yeah. <laughs> it's an entire family dynamic. That's, yeah. This, this whole dysfunctional thing. There's that whole, like, there was that a, is kind of fun. That mission where his daughter is going to go on the, on like, uh, 
like the reality show. Yeah, with um, with the, um, the the radio guy. Yeah, and, and every and you and one. Trevor like chase him down and strip him naked and and then film him on your phone. He also forced like a tattoo on his face. <laughs> yeah, the and then there's like the, and then there's his relationship with his son, who's like a consummate fuck up. Yeah, and his wife, who's like fucking the yoga instructor. And then at the end, the resolution is just like, listen, we're a fucked up family, but we're our fucked up family. So fuck you. <laughs> and it's a, but it's like one of those good kind of ways of being like you know what this is kind of how this would probably progress yeah um also the, on this list i just typed in dads and video games uh and octo dad deadliest catches on there he's a really good dad though <laughs> he's a fairly good dad he's an octopus in a suit <laughs> yeah, but like at least he's there though <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> can't as, say that for a lot of other dads um as the for the question games. of like why there's not a reason is i feel like we've only recently started exploring that relationship more in, in in a lot of media more I than think, just video games i think like, part of it comes down to a lot of people who are making movies are really into their kids lately yeah and the same with uh, people making games because a lot of people when they made a lot of well, that's the thing is that um especially with writing and things in general is that a lot of those people started when they're fairly young when some of them when they are working on these things yeah now they're all becoming dads and now even now they're thinking about it right and so they're like well, well let me put this let me put this sort of like energy into this and so there's a lot of movies like that, a lot of writers like that. There's comics that are doing that too. Like they're giving like superheroes kids more often. Yeah. Like Superman had his, has a son, Batman has a son now, like or kind of thing and they keep giving Spider-Man alternate kids kind of thing. I was trying to think I feel like on a lot of I was thinking back to the animes that I've watched and I feel like there's a lot of those though where it's just like there is no dad. Like yeah, like Midoriya doesn't have a dad in My Hero Academia. I and think like, one of the few dads in anime is um is uh, is Wild Tiger in Tiger and Bunny because he has a daughter. Oh, I guess and even uh, that relationship is kind of weird sometimes. Ed and Al's dad is a pretty major figure in Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, but he's a crazy person. Yeah, <laughs> he's also an immortal. Well, that's <laughs> like, the thing is like, kind of weirdo. If, uh, if dads tend to appear in animes, most of the time they're crazy people. Yeah, because there's the dad, of course, Shinji's dad. Oh yeah, um, and then there's um. Fucking Ikari. Uh, Aaron's dad at one point kind of thing. Although I don't know if he's crazy prison per se. From what? From Attack on Titan. Oh, Aaron right. Aaron's dad. Yeah, I don't know like if that's another dad that's existed. Know that yeah, Sort of. Well, that's the thing. Oh, is yeah. it's, not, it's hard to really say if he's crazy or not. Yeah. Because kind of, like, of the whole situation in general. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, a, that's a hard one. Um, but like a lot of dads and stuff... Like the few good dads tend to don't end well for them. Yeah. Like the dad from Death Note <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> like I said, one of the few like main character dads, or the dad in Full Metal Alchemist, the uh, forgot his name, the one uh, who's always showing the picture of his daughter. Because he's like, I love my daughter. And oh, like, yeah. And you're like, I love, I love this guy. And you're like, oh, no. Also, I'm only two days from retirement. <laughs> yeah. And I'm the happiest man in this world. And you're just like, oh, shit. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, there's very few like anime main character dads like i said wild tiger is one of the few that i know and he doesn't even live with his daughter for most of that series mob from mob psycho 100 has both of his parents and they're, yeah. and they're really just like just supportive they're just like yeah yeah um it's that's the thing is that a lot of anime and comics are really bad about parental things it, it's it's like it's so it's such a like i feel like it's such a complicated thing right that it's way easier to write write the parents out yeah. like to keep the parents out of it or or it's like an easy motivator right like, and they mega died forever right. it's like okay like th th isn't it like a whole season of full metal alchemist before they even start talking about ed and al's dad and then i think so yeah. and then when they do he's just like that son of a bitch i hate him and then it's like why it's like oh, you find out three seasons so yeah, they don't they don't really talk about him much in the beginning and i don't know have they ever talked about what happened with midoriya's dad and uh, no it's never they uh, they uh, they talk about him once because he doesn't even show up in the flashbacks of Midoriya's a kid, right? Yeah, like now when they go to the doctor, he's or? mentioned in the doctor sequence though. Yeah, because they're like, because he asks like, "Oh, do you guys have quirks?" He's like, "Well, I have this quirk, and the dad has another quirk." Oh, right. And but that's the only time, as far as I know, they've ever really brought him up. Yeah. Although I don't really remember if they brought him up at any other point because it, like it's one of those things that just doesn't really get. But even talked when it, about. even when you think about it, it's like like Bakugo's family. His mom is like the screamy, yelling. His dad's just like a, yeah. a pip squeak, and that like the backstory of that's fucking hysterical. Uh, the who's the the fire and ice guy? Like his dad his is dad's the second in, number in, hero, in Inferno or in Endeavor. Endeavor, uh, yeah. and he's a son of a bitch. I guess you know one of the one of the shorthands that it gives you is by not having an actual father, then like it makes 
like in that story, it makes Midoriya and All Might's relationship it makes stronger that much more because parental. it's also filial. Yeah, yeah as, a, as, as in addition to being a mentor thing. So it's yeah. the same with um, Naruto. Has that happen a lot? Like he, he, you eventually find out what happened to his dad, but he has a lot of parental figures throughout that series. So yeah. Mm. Anyway, let's do some Discord questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, little Willie has another has a another movie question for us. Says, uh, "Hey, uh, Jeff and Michael. Historically speaking, film adaptations of video games tend to be pretty terrible. If you could get an adaptation of any franchise, along with reasonable assurance that it would uh, at least at the end of the, at least end up being a fairly good film, what would you pick, and who would you want to direct it? For example, I would probably want to see a reboot of Silent Hill directed by Guillermo del Toro. Actually, that sounds awesome." Yeah, probably. Just get Hideo Kojima and on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just make Silent Hills. <laughs> Somebody make it. Did Just, they? I think they eventually. Did they have cancel that Allison Road game that was like the spiritual successor to? No, I think PT? they had to change the name or something because um, they kept getting sued or something. Okay. Um. So okay, th- this one's a little difficult because this one's tricky. Here's the thing: it has to be. It can't be a a JRPG, right? I don't want to see a movie of Final Fantasy VII. I mean, I've seen that. It's called Advent Children. <laughs> like, uh, or, or like, it has to be something that's short enough to be able to be done in a movie, right? Yeah. So like Metal Gear, I don't think would make a good movie because it's too too well, long. You can like, shorten... Uh, you can make the original Metal Gear, I think, in a movie pretty easily. Maybe. It would just... It would be so packed, you know? You wouldn't yeah, have any time to let original. the characters... Yeah, well, that's why I said original, original. Oh, like here. NES? Because, like, like NES or, like, here. MSX. Because there's the characters are easy to, like, just be like, that dude runs real fast, and he yeah, dies. Yeah, but even so, it's just like, <laughs> go back to the building to get the rocket launcher. Which is why you could easily do it. Yeah. Because like, there's not a lot going on in it. Uh, um, you know, Doom 2016, I think, would make for a really good film adaptation. I think it would very because easily. Because you could cut out a lot of it. It's just, like, start... Space Marine murder wakes up <laughs> murder 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 and especially compared to that game. that new Doom that they're oh, they've yeah. got that the whole like, thing looks like shit it looks so bad um, um I still think a Bionic Commando game or not game but <laughs> actually yes game a uh, Bionic Commando movie would be pretty cool but I don't know who I would get to direct it though I don't really know very much about directors the problem okay so the problem that I see is that most games like. <laughs> Everybody does, right. We, we watch them both on TVs, but games are not movies. Movies are not games. Yes, exactly. Uh, so the best way to pick a game to be a movie would be to pick something that has a lush enough universe that you could then create a movie plot based off of the game. Like, I don't know. In that respect, maybe Metal Gear works, right? Cut off all the, bo- cut down most of the bosses. Yeah. Make it like really speed it up. Get rid of most of the philosophical right. questions. Oh my God. So much of it. I don't think, though, that you could do two or three. No. Or four. Four. Maybe four if you just mostly put it in the Middle East and then switched over to the thing at the end. But maybe. I anyway, uh, uh, Metal Gear wouldn't be a good one. Like, I don't think Dark Souls would be good or Bloodborne. Actually, Bloodborne, I think Bloodborne would be great, actually. Would be good because there's so little story there that yeah you could just pick a little bit of it speed it up you could easily do a lot of horror directors for that one right thing i actually that's so that's a movie i think guillermo del toro, del toro could do pretty easily yeah um i still yeah the for me it's a lot of stuff it's like they're games that have a lush enough universe but they're games that were like yeah they tend to be nes games like with castlevania mm-hmm. like i'm really glad with how castlevania 3 got turned into this anime Netflix show. Oh, right. And it's like, it's, yeah, you you have enough to work with that you can flesh it out really well. That's why I said Bionic Commando, because there's enough in there that you could flesh out pretty easily. And they did, you know, with Rearm, they fleshed it out more. And honestly, I think one of the, like, Halo is simple enough that you could, because there's, you got all these fucking, like, books and just random shit. I'd rather watch a Halo movie make. any day of the week than yeah, play it would Halo. Be, <laughs> it would be really easy to do, because, like you said, like, about the original Halos, it's a lot of just walk and push a button walk and push a button yeah like I, I know that for like i know like i like Halo a lot but i know full well that's what those fucking games are but the story is so simple enough that you could just you could just cut like certain sections just make set piece set piece set piece set piece and the right. thing would be done yeah and the same with a lot of other shooter stuff like i don't know about gears of war specifically i don't know if it would make a good movie because i haven't really played through them enough to really know there's a there's there's like three stories going on in Gears of War. Like if you just do humans versus locust, that's fine. That's easy. Yeah. When you start adding in emulsion and the lambent, and then like then the swarm and the 
like there's a lot going on in there. I don't know. Maybe. I'm trying to think. I, you know what? I think it would make a better game is I want to see Just Cause made into a movie, but I want it to be set in 1985. I want it to be like a like a commando style 80s action movie. That would be great. Out actually. of Just Cause with fucking Rico Rodriguez just with a big scorpion on the back of his jacket. I think beat 'em up games actually could be easily made into movies if you actually make them actual fighting things. Like if you if you got like a the group like the raid kind of thing and made them make a streets of of rage kind of movie of just like hey the plot is that they beat up everyone <laughs> like yeah like it would be entertaining enough really I thought you were talking thing. about like um uh like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat which should be easy right because we know how be easy, we know how to do a like a tournament fighter uh, yeah. movie. You just do Enter the Dragon, but make it Street Fighter instead of Enter the Dragon. Because, you know, Enter the Dragon was kind of the basis for a lot of fighting game characters. No, and fucking, stuff, like, like, I want him to, you know what, make another Double Dragon, but actually make it like this. <laughs> but make it like an eight, like an 80s movie. Like sure. a 1985, like, like goofy, like the way Double Dragon Neon is. Like, just go full on, just goofy as shit with it. Okay. Kind of thing. I think it would work did out you, really well. Did you ever watch the Ratchet and Clank movie? No, I kept hearing it was bad. But I heard I was, it was bad from a lot of people. But I was, I was trying to figure out how that would be possible. Like it's made by somebody. It's like, such a simple story, too. Yeah. You know, I, don't have to, like, I never, I, you know, I never even bothered watching it. Neither did I. I didn't even play the remake game that they did. You know what they should do is they should make a movie based off the universe from the Star Wars Battlefront games. I think that would be pretty cool. They call it yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> and then, like, it'll be about, like, how the Jedis and the Stormtroopers fight each other. And then, like, they can make maybe, like, eight different spinoffs and merchandising rights will be huge. They can make an Ewok show. You get John Williams <laughs> to do all the music for it. You or know? you get Danny Elfman for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we can get that guy who does the Joker to be in it. You know what? I'd love to see an experimental art movie that was Portal. Even though I think that's, that that would be great, actually. Even though I think Portal really, really, because you know what, Did, there was like people that made shorts around Portal. Well, well, they got one of those guys to make a movie, didn't they? Uh, they I made him. They, it was like a twenty-minute short. He or something made like something that. not too long ago. But like, I I think that you would need some kind of weirdo experimental director because I mean, technically, Portal is a story with one voice. Well, you could get like, <laughs> like um, <laughs> because that's the thing is, there's a lot of like, um, what's the word, like artful sci-fi movies. Sure. Like Ex Machina is like a good example of that. You yeah. could easily make something portal like with just that kind of budget. Yeah. Because it's not a lot of work really for some of it kind of thing. Like yeah. there's some really intricate set pieces, but they're puzzles well, and you plus, don't really need like, that per se. The story beats of Portal are right. Like person wakes up, they're in a testing facility. What's going on here? Something's wrong with this AI. No, really, something's wrong with this AI. That AI just tried to kill me. I'm trying to get out of here. I escaped. Yeah. Like, you could make a two-hour movie. Portal is only, like, two hours when you play it, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I do like think... you could throw some of the stuff on part two in there. Like, that actually has the backstory stuff Yeah, pretty easily. I think that Portal... Plus, you could get J.K. Simmons to do it again. That'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's his name? The guy that played uh, Wheatley? Oh, uh, um... God, I never remember his name. I Steven remember, Merchant? Yeah, Merchant or I so whatever? So. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's stuff out there. I think... I still think Resident Evil... I. I, I didn't hate all the Resident Evil movies. The problem I got was just that, you know, they just went a little bit too far off in a weird direction where it was well, like... they got too, too like, in, super action -y. In the first one, it was like, why does Alice have to be, like, super powered? Why does the Resident Evil lab have to be, like, this gigantic underground thing? And why couldn't you start with the mansion, right? Yeah. Like, it's a buddy cop film where Chris and Jill are sent out... Because there was a team that went to the mansion and they called for a backup. And so these two stars guys, the people come out and they like break into this mansion. Suddenly the mansion's this crazy saw. It'd be like saw meets the the living dead, you know, type of thing. Yeah, because the issue is they just got too like, com like basically superhero comic book like. Yeah. Is the thing. Like, because that's why I, I like the second one enough because it still has some horror stuff in it. Even if she still has her being a super action hero thing for some fucking reason i don't know why she, i don't know why mila jovich had to be like she's a clone with powers that with amnesia and it's just like this is a zombie movie yeah. you didn't need all of you this didn't need any of how it. are we gonna get out of this house what is umbrella up to what is this lab oh my god there are liquors they're horrifying shoot like, them shoot them you easily know make an actual horror movie, normal horror movie out of the original resident evil i almost became a jill sandwich 
Uh, another Mike but writes But is it a hot in, dog, though? A Jill hot dog. Uh, <laughs> another Mike writes in with another food question. It says, hello, Jeff and Michael. Uh, what's your favorite kind of citrus juice? Lemonade, pulpy orange, ruby red, grapefruit, tangerine, etc. Yes, I'm asking this because it's very late and I'm eating an orange. And that's from Mike. <laughs> what would be lemonade? Lemonade? It's just, just classical lemonade. Okay. Yeah. What about like just has too much fucking pulp. Strawberry lemonade? Peach lemonade? No. Put some flavorings in there? Mostly just normal lemonade. Yeah. Personally. I think strawberry and I mean it's pretty good, but I just like normal lemonade a lot. Especially if it's made really well. Okay. Like where it's it, where the sugar isn't like overpowering the lemon or or the or vice versa. Which is really rare actually. Yep. But it's one of too sour good. or too sweet. Yeah, but when it's good, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um Okay. What's your uh, answer? Orange, orange, juice. orange juice. It's just orange juice. Uh, freshly squeezed. I actually got a, an electric. It's not like a. It's not like a, a squeezer, but it's just like one of those. Okay, so when you squeeze in oranges, you got the just that thing that you hold and then you just twist it. Yeah. And at the store for twenty bucks, a, a one time, a long time ago, um, they sell a thing where it's just like when you push the orange down and it just goes. Oh, and it turns it the thing by itself, so yeah. you don't have to do it. You still have to push the orange down, but yeah. you don't have to do all that bullshit. Um, the problem is it's really hard to clean, but when oranges are in season and they're selling them at HEB for like $6 a bag, I'll just buy a bag of oranges and make fresh orange juice. I'm just like, mm, I don't have to share this with anybody. It's all <laughs> it's mine. mine. Because when I was a kid at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we used to get up and my dad would always squeeze fresh orange juice for everybody. But, you know, squeezing orange juice is, is garbage. It's, yeah, it's a, a pain in the ass. sucky thing and it sucks. Um, so... He would squeeze it, and we would have a big jug of it, and then everybody would just get a little bit. You know, everybody would get as much as we would divide it into quarters, and then it was like, that's all there is. And now it's like I can make myself a whole <laughs> fucking 20 pound bag of oranges and just be like, go, 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 go. Like, take that, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Why don't you love me? <laughs> I want to see that Ad Astra movie. Um, uh, I'm going to skip this one because it requires a little bit of, of foreknowledge. Um, about a very specific thing. I will want to know what that question is later. Okay. Uh, I think we got time for one more. Let me just look through what I've got here. Um, let's do... Um, this is another kind of movie-ish question. Uh, I think I'll... And that one's got a... Um, Okay, yeah, this is a good one. I think this one's a good one to to, right, go to finish out on. Mammoth Moxie writes in and says, so my question is, do you ever think an ending that subverts expectations is a bad thing? For example, having finished River City Girls a week ago, the ending uh, had a sort of gotcha moment and played it off as a laugh. I won't spoil it because some people haven't played it, but it got me thinking the endings um, to bring my expectations. Wait, got me thinking the endings to bring my expectations, and I was a little bit annoyed at that. Oh, broke my expectations? I think that's what he meant. Yeah. Um, so I guess my real question, uh, to phrase it properly, uh, is do you think an ending that subverts expectations is a good thing or sometimes is a predictable ending the best kind of ending? As always, stay awesome. And that's from Mad Miss Moxie. It depends on the subversion, I guess. Yep. Because that was the thing about um, Mr. M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. Mm -hmm. M. Night Shyamalan is that he was known for the subverting expectation, the kind of thing. And sometimes it was really awesome. And then sometimes it was Devil, where you realize <laughs> when you knew full well what the, what the twist was the entire he time. He only produced Devil. Either way, you still knew what the twist was either way. But kind of that's thing. all right, because you could sub any other movie of his out. And I yeah. watched Lady in the Water all the way to the end and was like, fuck this movie. That movie's go, so bad. Go fuck yourself. But um, no, yeah, there's a lot of great ones like that. Um, the original Dead Space has a great moment like that, mm -hmm. uh, where you're just, and then, and then, there's even more where you realize the fucking way the levels basically were telling you the whole time. Yep. Like there's a lot of cool shit that is like a subvert of an expectation. It depends on what it is because um, yeah. I, 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 yeah, hundred percent with you on the depends on what it is because like I don't think it was subversive, but like sometimes when you build expectations and then do not deliver on them, yeah, like Mass Effect, then like it it deflates you, right? Like. Um, yeah. Completely, especially with like all the work you had to put into Mass Effect, mm -hmm. and you're like, and they're and it and it constantly telling you everything matters, right? Every little thing matters. Yep. Until the last second, where it's like, well, the, what color do you like? That's <laughs> basically what the ending was. But but then also let us not let us not beat around the bush and say that 
okay, you, you, you check me on this. I need checking on this, but I need to think about it. How many games have truly satisfactory endings? Just in general. Not subversive, not not subversive, but like, is it like 20%? Like a lot of games just kind of end. A lot you have of the them big are boss just... fight, and then it's like, great, we're done. I didn't care anyway. Like I'm looking at you, Borderlands. <laughs> like I just, you know, a lot of them just sort of. Yeah, some of the worst ones are just the ones that just end randomly. Right. Like I've I've said it a million times. Lords of the Shadow Two has the worst fucking ending. Of yeah. Like any fuck one of the of any probably any game I've ever played. It's just so just like, and then everything ended. It's like, what was the point of all of this? Or like, I beat Gears 5, and the ending of Gears 5 is a setup for Gear 6. Yeah, there's a lot and of... And I'm like... That's my issue with a lot of satisfying. the big franchises. <laughs> yeah. Is their their endings are just setups for what happens afterwards. Hell, we were talking about that earlier. That's what I'm afraid of happening at the end of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Right? Is that they're, you, you don't even get the satisfaction of an ending because it's just like, and to be continued in two years. And then and we like, walked outside and beat up a chocobo. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. But is it the end of it's just going to be opening a door and then there's the world and it's like, oh, okay. What? Because... I'm going to bring up Halo again, to be honest. But <laughs> what, what I like about the first Halo Ooh. is Halo is willing to give you a nor- like an actual ending. Right. Because like you, you destroyed Halo, and that's it. Like it, like, And the game's like kind Spoiler of... Spoiler alert for Halo. Yeah, oh. the game kind of maybe hints at the idea that there might be something afterwards, but they full well were like, look, this is this is a full story yeah. kind of thing. But the issue, that's why I have an issue with... I remember the ending, the first Gears was like that. It was just like, and then you defeated the dude on the, I think it's the train. General Rom. Yeah, and then, but it's like, but there's so much more. I'm like, God damn it. Like, this isn't the end of a story, like, kind of thing. Right. Like, and that's my issue with, with, that's my issue with a lot of games now is there, a lot of them are, are, this is, this is going to be our big franchise. Don't fuck this up, kind of thing. Right. (laughs) And they don't give endings, kind of, like, Destiny at the is like a weird one in that kind of sense. I'm actually trying to think of what games had subversive endings now. Like I thought it worked in Bioshock Infinite because it I didn't great in I'd, Bioshock Infinite. I didn't see it coming. It worked it great worked, in the original yeah, Bioshock. It well, absolutely did. And for uh, me at least. Uh, no, 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 cuz that was like the third that was like a third act twist. Oh yeah, that's right. The actual ending of original Bioshock kind of sucks. It's a, just a weird kind of It's just a weird battle. boss fight. Um, um I think okay, the the one for me that I know doesn't work is the Bionic Commando 2008 one. No. Oh. Because it's just like, your wife was your arm, but it's just like, oh, okay. And also, oh, Super Joy is the bad guy. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Did you not find that out until the end of the game that your wife is in your arm? Yeah, because it's, it's just before you fight Super Joe. Oh. Because Super Joe tells you, like, because as a dick move. Maybe you're the only person who's invested in this 2008 Final Commander I game. I played that entire <laughs> game beginning to end. <laughs> but that's, that's, like, that's, because I actually really like that game up to a point. And, the, and that game's just like, oh, it turns out your wife was your arm, and also Super Joe is the bad guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> And then it just sort of ends, and they're just like, oh, okay, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, you know, God of War does kind of set up for a sequel. Like, if it if there wasn't another one, I feel like it would just kind of be very much the end. But yeah. Um, that one's pretty good about that. But then uh, I feel like all the God of War franchises have kind of set up for sequels. Like yeah, one, even two, this and latest one has, yeah. Uh, w- one and two, and then even three couldn't just end. Because it was supposed to be go. like, Kratos is dead, and then it was like... Done and I'm like okay, come on, <laughs> assholes. Um, but I'm trying to. I'm just trying to think of of games with with really tricky endings. Like Metal Gear Solid One's kind of like that. Mr. President. <laughs> yeah, Mr. President. Um, <laughs> but see, that was so... That, uh, you and I were talking about how, like, I think Kojima just fucking shot himself in the ass with that he one totally line. Did. Because it meant that the bad guy in Metal Gear Solid 2 had to be... The president. Somehow related to the president, and Kojima was just like, it is the president. The president's got Dr. Octopus arms. And he's also a clone. And he's also a clone, a big boss. He's Solid Snake's <laughs> older brother, and it's like, what's happening? <laughs> what? Who? What? Uh, I'm trying to think of games like like a lot of games that had satisfactory endings were very old games. Like they're I'm old, just trying to think of the subversive ones, old PlayStation ones. Uh, well, all the subversive ones, there's a, like they're constantly trying to subvert F- you. F- uh, MGS Five was subversive. Yeah, that was actually subversive, and it worked on me to be honest. I actually really like that ending. Um, you know, I think that Portal has a. I don't know if what you would call the end because in the the end of Portal One, it's like you explode right out into the and then you're just yeah. like in the parking lot of of aperture science but it's that it's the song like oh yeah the ending of portal would have been nowhere near as satisfying if it wasn't for still alive no absolutely because that was just like oh my god this is amazing like yeah, this is amazing that, and it shows you the cake at the end <laughs> yeah 
And that, Double Dragon and, Neon has a great ending as well. And and, and and Portal 2 also has that same has a great ending where yeah. where she just is like, I don't need you anymore. Get the fuck out of here. And then it takes you up and then it and then they throw you out the door into that just wheat field in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And it's just there's nothing. And then the door opens and the charred companion cube comes out behind it. Just like, oh, GLaDOS does care after all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. Portal Two is an emotional roller coaster. Portal Two is amazing. All the uh, Cave Johnson and uh, um, Carolyn, and you know, there's so much fucking crazy shit going on. Portal Two. Glados is a potato. Wheatley yeah. is crazy. Uh, space guy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you have the space sphere, the adventure sphere. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's such a good game. Yeah, there's some endings that their their subversive endings are. Or it's just strange. I'm just trying to think of them. Like I'm just trying to think of games that actually take a chance on the ending. Um, Spec Ops. Oh, Spec, Spec Ops, Ops is a good is one. A great yeah. example of a fantastic one. Yeah, because uh, that one's just like, oh, I thought this was just like some normal military shooter. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna say a lot of these. Yes, like because we got Red Dead. Red, Red Dead's fantastic. Red, Red Dead great is great. Twist kind of ending. Uh, in fact, um. I always, I never think it gets enough credit, but I think the GTA Four. Oh uh, no, absolutely! That, that right before the end of the game twist, yeah. uh, and it's it's really impactful if you really were into like into like either of those two characters. And see, it's weird because some of these are like Knights of the Old Republic is kind of like Bioshock, and that you find out the big twist like two thirds of the way through. Yeah, and it's a good twist though. It is, um, especially like, if you just didn't see it coming. Braid is interesting. I don't know if you remember that one. Where it Braid out. was an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I uh, think that one was that was such a. I remember when it happened. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, like, I'm gonna say, and then I'm trying to think of ones that 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 didn't work, like because all these ones that we're talking about worked for me. Well, that's the thing is, like, uh, it's harder to remember the. Really bad ones. I think heavy rain. Heavy was, rain is a bad is one. a bad one. <laughs> heavy rain's a really bad one. Yeah, because you can figure that shit out on your own pretty easily. Well, or I I didn't figure it out out of my own, but by the time I got to the end of heavy rain, I didn't care. <laughs> it's just like oh shocker. Well, like it's funny because the way the way I discovered it, it's like oh I can't get this person killed, kind of thing. And it's like oh, <laughs> uh, all the Assassin's Creed ones were like that too. Yeah. Ish MGS two. This list has Metroid on there just because like Samus is a girl. What? That was actually kind of amazing. Uh, see, the, a lot of these lists have Modern Warfare on because of when the when the nuke goes off and you they, that's the level where you get killed, where the Marine guy gets killed. But then like uh, that wasn't the end, <laughs> right? I looked the, up I looked up a list on my own and it brought up Bionic Commando. Oh, there you go, there you go. Um, well, I don't know. I think that, um, yeah, Resident Evil, Wesker's the bad guy all along. That was a pretty good one. Who could have seen it coming? Um, well, you know what? I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, I feel like we could keep looking at lists and being like, that one, that one. <laughs> uh, but I guess the answer to Ms. Moxie's question is I generally tend to like twist endings because um, it's, they're usually done. I'm having a hard time thinking of ones that didn't go well well the reason um, we forget them is because they were so bad we would rather forget they existed right i and, guess the other thing is that like they, I, they were franchises that died pretty easily maybe there's i haven't i haven't never run it i don't think i can think of an example except outside of mass effect of a game that i liked that then i thought that the ending like that the, the a lot of these games i feel like it's a bad game with a bad ending right yeah. i'm trying to think of a good game with a bad ending that was not only a bad ending, but was like trying to be subversive, and that was the reason the ending was bad. Well, that was the reason I brought up like I was saying Assassin's Creed was like that because Assassin's Creed Three, oh god, was such like and but the problem with that is that Assassin's Creed Three wasn't all that good of a I game. I don't like Assassin's Creed Three, yeah. but I but the issue was that for me is that it's a, the ending of a of a huge trilogy, right? Well, that had some really good moments in it. Most of the Assassin's Creed games fall on their face at the end. That's the thing. Most of them do. Because, like, Although it, I think Assassin's Creed 2 has a great one. In because one, even in Assassin's Creed 2, even Ezio's like, what the fuck are you... What are you looking at? <laughs> that part's great, but then the, all the Desmond stuff is is garbage. Yeah, that's uh, the like, thing. And so the end of it, it's like, oh, right, this wasn't actually a story about Altair. It was a story about Desmond. And now Kristen Bell's going to get, and now fucking Eleanor Shellstrop's got to get Desmond uh, jerk off outside of, uh, out of the, the Templars. And yeah. it's like, oh, 
Well, that's stupid. That's neat, I guess. But there was enough. Like, I liked, I think that Ezio's story is fine. Like, Ezio's, yeah, Ezio's story has story a good ending. And so then when you go back to to dumb uh, um, Desmond, it's like, oh, well, this is, uh, I already got the ending to this. <laughs> I feel like Far Cry 5 is a game that's just, annoys me the whole almost a lot yeah because there's a lot it's it feels like a good game but the story itself is actually constantly trying to subvert my expectation of the idea it's like what if you're the bad guy I'm like but i'm clearly not yep. is the thing it so, never makes a good enough case for that for it to then at the end be like oh no you're the monster and i'm like but i'm obviously not yeah i didn't kidnap and drug people so and, like, i'm not the monster whole, like cut people's skin off kind of thing right like, what it's like oh i'm trying to save all of these people from being killed in a nuclear explosion by drugging them and turning them into brain dead slaves, and it's like that's not better. No, it's, <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> it's much much worse, actually. Like you took over the farmers market and turned it into a weapons depot. You're not the good guy here. No. Like I'm the good guy, but what if you aren't? But I am. <laughs> like we're not. Ha- we don't have to have this discussion. You're a crazy religious zealot. I'm a cop. Actually, you know what? I think the endings of Far Cry Three are are kind of bad. Because of the fact that like both the good and the bad ending aren't really all that interesting. Yeah, but I think that Far Cry Three is a game peters out once Voss dies. So uh, guess, like yeah. as soon as Voss is out of the picture and it's like And Far Cry Four has a good kind of subverting I, yeah, Far Cry Four I really like that one quite a that bit. That one has a really good ending. Or not good, but you know what I mean. It's uh, it's good for what's happening. I like it. <laughs> I think it's great. Well the, 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 what I meant, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's not good good <laughs> it's not like white hat cowboy it's not good. like everything yep. is fantastic it's right. like oh shit uh i don't think this is a good idea <laughs> yep and depending which one you do is way worse than the other kind of thing yep uh and yeah with that we're gonna say we're done uh michael tell the people they can find you when you're not over here uh, sometimes you can find me on one of us.net all right mail at rage select.com is the email address patreon.com forward slash rage select is where you can go to help us out and with that we're done and now uh michael i i, I gotta eat a bunch of hot dogs we gotta go get some hot dogs i think we should go go get some hot dogs